Listen up, Vegas. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Perfect. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Slaughterhouse. With me today, my good friend Ken from Toy Connection, Brian from Hooded Cobra Commander 788, Gaz from down at the local pub and also in the chat, and Carson from 3D Joe's. Hello, everybody. Hello. How you doing? You, you Almost forgot. It. It's been a while. <laughs> so we've, uh, we, we will also have another guest. Uh, David is running a bit late. Uh, but I'll do a proper introduction to David when he does arrive. Uh, drive safely. Don't rush. It's only the slaughterhouse. We're not going anywhere. All right. So first of all, I will say, uh, as of uh, when I took this photo, I'm not sure if it's changed yet, but Carson, yes. look at that. Look at it's that. Going, it's going pretty well, man. It's going pretty well. We're, we're in that inevitable, you know, you have that huge rush at the beginning and then you slowly, slowly rise through the middle and then hopefully you get a little rise at the end. But it's looking right. good, man. We're, we've funded uh, seven out of the 18 figures. So Yes. With 22 days to go, 537 backers as of the time that I took this photo. I mean, you already are over your uh, original pledge that you wanted to get. Now yeah. I think we just gotta just gotta hit a few more milestones, uh, and then everything will be unlocked. But congratulations, yeah. my man, that is awesome. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I've uh, been working all day today to create graphics for each of the eighteen figures with you know little goal milestones on it because you know what I've discovered is people don't like to read. <laughs> and at the <laughs> at the bottom of the uh, Kickstarter story, there's like all this budget information. And I'm getting questions about that. I'm like, well, it's all at the bottom. Okay, I'll just make a graphic. <laughs> so right. I'm, I I'm going yeah. to be pumping out daily graphics for the next, let's see, for the next nine days, I think is the strategy. I'll pump out two figure graphics per day for the next nine days. And you'll get to see all 18 figures. And it'll be crystal clear at what point they unlock. And then we're also thinking about doing, uh, well, not even, I won't even say we're just thinking about it. We're going to be revealing a Kickstarter exclusive figure that is free for all of the all in backers. So we really oh, want to incentivize. Cool. Yeah. We want to incentivize and celebrate our all in backers because you know, they're, they're just, they're going hard on this thing just like I've been. And, uh, and I wanted to do something special for them. So we don't have the paint master ready yet, but it's in progress. We're, we're working on it. I really don't want to show it until I have a paint master. Otherwise it's just like showing a color study. And that's not right. as exciting. So I, I think so. You know, just so, just curious then, because some people are going to ask this question. I, I'm sure yeah. is that going to be the 18th figure that was supposed to be released, or is this no. another figure on top? So it's basically a 19th figure, assuming Correct. they all get okay. Yep. I gotcha. Yeah, I got So, so the way that we're able to do this, you know, obviously, like I said, I want to uh, thank and and celebrate the all-in backers and their commitment to the project. So I wanted to do something nice for them. The way that we can do that where it doesn't cost another $30,000 of, you know, cutting molds and pouring plastic, we obviously still, obviously still have to pay to pour the plastic and pl uh, print the card backs and seal the bubbles on the cards and that kind of thing. But it's significantly cheaper to do what I'm planning to do, which is a Midnight Ops Rotello. So he'll be... Wow. Cool. You know, because because Rotello is a very colorful, bright guy. He's got a light blue shirt on and an orange handkerchief. And I love the deco. I think Kirk did great with picking yeah. that out. But I also want a Midnight Ops Rotello that's just kind of stealthy. You know, like, I like uh, that. I like yeah. that. I I, nice I would like that, please. Okay. So is that is, is that is that <laughs> the spoiler? That's that's the uh, all in. That's the all in uh, bonus. You know, I can't really hold much back. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I just share everything. Unfortunately, I'm not really great at holding secrets. Like if anybody watches my YouTube channel, they already know what all 18 figures are. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's spoilers everywhere. If you go digging That's deep true. enough for them. If you watch your Joe Fest yeah. panel, we know. So, yeah. Exactly. So, so what I'm doing now, several people on the campaign have been like, Hey, look, man, we watched the YouTube video. There's some really cool concepts in waves three and four. Most people haven't seen those yet. You really need to show those to get people excited about waves three and four. And 
Uh, so that's what I'm working on right now. I've got to say, man, like I listen to everything you guys say. I read every comment. And if I hear something multiple times, I take it to heart. You know what I mean? If if multiple people are saying, hey, man, you really should consider doing it this way. Trust me, brother. I'm considering it. You know, that's awesome. We'll just uh, do a quick shout out to some people in the chat uh, before we get moving. Uh, so Grindhead Jim says, can't stay, but wanted to drop a like and show support for this project. I will happily be backing very soon. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Michael Reed says, hello. Will your work be made public soon? Interesting. So the, the work that I've been doing all day, all day today under the uh, stewardship and guidance of kind of a mentor for me in this uh, toy Kickstarter space, uh, Ben Conway, who did RoboSkull, uh, we've been checking in on a regular basis and strategizing. And, and he was definitely encouraging me, go ahead and roll out all 18 figures, show people what's possible make it right. really clear, you know, where each one of those unlocks. And so I've been working on stuff all day and sending it to him to look at, and he's giving me feedback on it. So I'm really That's grateful cool. for the friends that I have in the hobby that, you know, that helped me along the way. There's a lot. That of is great. Things. That is great. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Gaz is in the chat. Good on you, Gaz. Multitasking. Spine ticks. Great channel. Wasabi. Uh, I'm not a fan of Wasabi, but what's up? I can't Do you remember Wasabi. that? You remember the commercial there where they go Wasabi? Yes. It, yeah. Somebody That's said Wasabi. Right. Yes. Oh okay. right. Well, that might be the reference. Maybe. Yeah, That's exactly I, I what it is. It. I remember when What's Up was a, a hot thing. Everyone was saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, greetings, greetings from Scooby Beans. Uh, Toy Connections in the chat. Good boy. Yeah, like yeah, I like Ken. <laughs> He's all right. I, <laughs> Phil from Treasures for Trigger. Hey guys, Phil's a great Phil? guy. I like the name yeah. Trigger. Jeff Morris. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello. Jeff. Articulated Chad. Okay, I'm here. Let's do this. What up, Chad? And, uh, uh, Magnificent Kaboom says, once funded, are the plans to manufacture and produce a toy domestically in the U.S.? Interesting. So I've gotten this question on my 3D Joe's Facebook page, and I'll gladly answer it here. So basically, with 3DJoes.com, uh, I've done the Collecting the Art of G.I. Joe book series, six volumes. All six were produced right here in North America. I've also produced 17 posters for 3djoes.com, all produced right here in America, North America, in the United States specifically, most of them in North Carolina, where I'm from. I love to keep things local when I can. Number one, because I like to you know, keep people employed that are around me. That's good for all of our communities, right? But number right. two, selfishly, because I can go in and do press checks and make sure things are going well and quality control. So trust me, man, I don't want to produce action figures in China. I don't, I would rather do it in the United States where I could jump on a quick flight and be there at the factory, you know, quality controlling and checking everything. That's, right. that's my nature. That's what I would prefer. But I have yet to have a North American manufacturing facility tell me that they can produce vintage style, modern O-ring action figures, highly articulated with T-hooks and rivets and rubber band O-rings. Nobody in, the, in this country is doing that. Um, if there anybody is listening and knows North American manufacturing partners in the United States that would be eager to take on this project, I will give them a chance. If the pricing is even remotely close to the pricing of what we've scoped with our Far East uh, partners. So here's the thing, like just the creative development of this stuff is significant money. I believe it's around $8,500 just to pay my creative partners for their work because every artist deserves to get paid up front. I would have right. never felt I would have never felt OK going to Kirk and Ron and Larry and Doug and Mark, Mark and everybody and saying, hey, can you guys work for free on this? I think it'll be really cool. I think we'll make money down the road at some point. <laughs> like I would never do that. So what I did was, hey, do you guys want to make some action figures? I'll pay for the creative development work up front. And then when we manufacture it on the back end, we'll share profits. So that's how we're structured. Operation Recall. Everybody in the in the creative team gets paid up front for their time. And then on the back end, we've got a profit sharing agreement, which they've never had in their lives on, on other toys that they've produced. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. So, yeah, man, I, you know, me, if I could produce this here and be at the factory quality control checking it, yeah. that'd be amazing. So, yeah, to, to the question, the question's not up on the screen anymore. So I forgot his name, but if he Maybe knows, Mr. Kaboom. Mr. Kaboom, if you know any factory contacts here in North America that would be willing to take on this work and could give me a proof of concept that they can actually do it. Uh, yeah, hook me up. 
reach out. I think it's really good that the uh, they're all going to have their name on a product. And I don't know if they've ever had that happen before. I mean, obviously, a lot of these people are recognizable by name now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time, you're, you're producing this stuff, you know, uh, and then largely it's just got a big Hasbro slap sticker on it saying, you know, this yeah. is us. Mm -hmm. But this really celebrates those individuals uh, for the, you know, they gave us our childhood. Absolutely. I've had a lot okay. of people saying comments just like that, especially on the yeah. uh, the creator YouTube video that I put up uh, a few days ago. It's right. interviews with the creators interwoven together. And there's been so many nice comments on that video. I've been sending it around. Mark and Kirk and Ron have all already seen it and they're, they're reading the comments. So that's really cool of you guys. Definitely get in there and, you know, tell them how you feel about them. Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, particularly must have happened that Joe Fest, where people would come up and, and tell you how much they appreciate everything that's happening here, uh, as well as going to the creators and whoever. I think uh, Ron Rudat was there. Uh, was mm -hmm. anyone else? That's right. Yeah, it was just Ron. It was just Ron this year. In years past, um, Ed has had many more creators there. So I, I hope in years future that we kind of get back to having more of the creators. Ron should be a staple. You know, right. if Mark Pennington wants to be there, Kirk Bazigian obviously should be there. Larry Hama should be there. It, this is yeah. just my opinion, but you know, Ed, I, Doug, everyone. I think it should creators. be centered around them, in my opinion, and then build it from there. But yeah, maybe, uh, maybe yeah, it could my be a... opinion is that it, it conflicted with another convention that uh, that Larry was needed right. to be at, and then Sergeant Slaughter also con uh, conflicted with another pre-scheduled date. So yeah, this year uh, a, a few of them missed. Yeah, it was the 40th anniversary of Heroes Con here in North Carolina, which yeah. is a big show, man. I love Heroes Con. I really wish that Joe Fest didn't intersect with it so much because it's intersected with it several years now. And uh, Heroes Con is a good show. It's where I used to go as a kid and get my heart broken by Dick Giordano when he would review my comic book portfolio. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he, he crushed me on several occasions. Uh, well, look at you now. You're living the dream, mate. There you go. Uh, Mike Michael's asking, uh, would the action figures be like the 1980s model? I reckon this is a good opportunity uh, to give us a rundown on exactly what uh, Operation Recall is and sure. what it's about. And I can uh, I can throw up some of these uh, the images. Or well, you start yeah. with what it is, and I'll start bringing up every character so far that we've got. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, the the gist of it is take the people that created these timeless action figures back in the 80s and 90s and bring them back on to active duty to create all new action figure concepts because we need them. We need new ideas. We need new characters. That's the premise. And so Operation Recall hinges on that term. Recall is something that the United States government can do to retired military in times of great need for the country. They can recall re retired military back to active duty. So that's the whole kind of marketing spiel for what is Operation Recall. In the physical form, what is Operation Recall? It's brand new action figures designed by the guys that did it in the 80s not only designed by them using the same processes and practices that they used back in the day, sculpted by the same people that sculpted them back in the day. So these are going to be as close to what you got back in the 80s from a creative production standpoint as possible. The only place where I've diverged in terms of the, you know, the technology and the practices and processes that were in place back then, we're doing 3D design and printed accessories. Because, come on, I mean, 3D technology is just, it's where right. it's at. It's, it's a better way to make accessories. Now, when people make 3D designed and molded characters, you know, say using ZBrush or Blender or whatever, uh, it's got a more artificial feel to it than somebody using their hands and doing it in clay where you have that human kind of aspect to it. So, and I think you'll all agree with that when you see the footage with Bill Markline where he's sitting there manipulating the material and you know, making right. each pocket individually and making each accessory individually. There's variance to all of them, but it's that humanity of it, it's that human variance. Whereas, you know, if you're doing it in digital, all three grenades would be the exact same grenade. You'd build it once and copy and paste it. All pockets yeah. would be the same. You'd copy the left butt cheek and paste it on the right butt cheek, and it would just be the same. So the the humanity of the figure sculpt is really important to me, and that's why I'm not doing 3D sculpted action figures in you know 3d animate or 3d design software uh now in terms of the manufacturing they're going to be just like the vintage figures that you know and love with a couple small improvements so we're working with our friends at call sign longbow 
um, to it's grindstone toys, but they just did a campaign called call sign longbow. And I think more people know them by the call sign longbow brand. So we're working with the same project manager, same factory as those guys. And that just so happens to be the same factory as, you know, boss fight, uh, valid versus first wave, a a lot of, uh, small, I don't even want to say small. I want to say not the Hasbro's and Mattel's, uh, we're a small community, right? We're pretty tightly knit and it's important who we can trust. And so while I've had other factories reaching out to me incessantly in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> they're not, they're not attracting me away yet. Uh, you, you really want right. to go with a factory that you can trust that's delivered high quality, consistent um, toys. So that's what we're going with. Our goal is to make them as close as possible to the vintage toys. The one improvement uh, from an articulation standpoint is they're all going to break at the wrist and have a swivel wrist. So that's like, if you look at Rotello, he's got gloves that end right there. So that break would be right at the edge of the glove. There's some figures, like we've got one figure that's got that kind of predator claw that comes out past it. Right. And that's going to be really cool because the hand can swivel under it, you know? Oh, like, that's cool. Looking for little ways in, in, that we can kind of play up that new articulation point. I don't think we're going to do like Strike Force Alpha did like karate chop hands and different grips. Like there's a trigger grip and then there's a regular grip, right. I believe. I, we're not scoping doing that yet. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think that's necessary? Karate or chop or? would be cool. You want um, karate, I don't chop? Think, karate chop would be cool. I don't think a trigger finger is necessary. For this um, style. No. Yeah. I, no. But I, I, I mean, a karate chop is it's an option, right? I don't, I can't remember if anyone from the original gi joe line had except for that scuba hand that had the web hydro viper yeah, right yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah that was cool that actually came out of bart sears's drawing so that wasn't in the design and then bart sears did oh, the right. presentation art and in the presentation art he had the webbing they were like whoa that's really cool can we do that in the sculpt and so that's how oh, that right. came about but yeah I, I agree with you like in the modern era you know starting 2007 and up with the new four inch figures that they started developing. That's when you got the trigger finger. And that feels more modern to me than vintage. Like I'm I'm okay with these little hands. I think these little hands are fine. But I I do think the addition of a little swivel grip is gonna be cool on them. So to answer your question there, just as a collector, right? When Mm -hmm. I think of Strike Force Alpha, they have that retro look, but they're a little bit different because they amalgamate a little bit of everything. Zombies, cyborgs, Mm aliens so if they add a little different like the trigger hands and the and the karate chop it kind of mm, makes right. sense for them because they've deviated a little bit more yours mm. because you've got everybody like you said you've got rudat you've got Lazigian, merkline hart pennington hama moral i think i got everyone um carson um i think <laughs> it, when i think of operation recall the way i've described it to my friends is if the ara brand had continued past 1994 yeah. this is 1995 GI Joe and takes all the best of all the years. That's how yeah. I describe it. So if you if you if you keep the hands the way they are, but with the swivel wrist, who's updated it because it's newer, yeah, I totally I totally get that. It'll so. still fit because that's not like a visible change. It's a functional change. Like once you start playing with it, you'll notice it. But when they're sitting on the shelf, you won't look at that and be like, "Well, that's really photogenically, good, right? it's the same." Yeah, right. And that's, and that's right. the thing. But I it's agree. a functional change because we're older and we're looking for things like that. Yeah. And the problem it's, is also if you yeah. start if you start doing one thing, you're gonna have to do all things because people right. are always just now thinking, well, what about fists? What Where's about my fists? rocker? Where's my rocker angles? Right. Yeah. You know? That's it. Yeah. I mean, no, I guess I you could double up uh, a karate chop to a salute, but here's, uh, here's where I think I would rather spend the manufacturing dollars because it's all about real estate and the mold. How many pieces can you fit in each mold that you're cutting and the plastic that you're pouring, right? So where I would rather spend my dollars is for a character like Great White, for example, who's an underwater bad guy, right? It's a really cool design with this uh, with this mask with the clear visor that's where the mouth of the shark is open and he's got a fin on his head and he's got a fin on his jetpack and it's going to be a lot of fun. But so that's a troop builder. Now the, the kid that did the designs for it wanted a scar down the eye and a dead eye. Well, that turns it into a unique individual. So my thought for Great White is what if we did a head pack where you have three to five different heads of different ethnicities, different demographics, could be different sexes. You know, there could be female Great Whites too. And I mean, the fact that he's wearing a scuba suit 
you might not need to see the difference in the female body versus the male body because it's a scuba suit. Kind of, it's like one of those. You look at torpedo. Pieces. That looks like a female body the whole way. I, I am, <laughs> I am convinced that that was supposed to be a female. Okay. I cannot. There's nothing on that that, that screams male to me. Uh, well, oh, so I'll instead of know. doing alternate hands, you know, mm. for example, for great white, let's do a few alternate heads and then it becomes a, a more believable yeah. troop builder where you have different people mm. represented. The I one agree. character that's the 18th of uh, the 17th, he's uh, wave four, figure four, is uh, his name was unknown because the guy didn't submit him with the name and that name's kind of stuck now, but oh, I've no. heard back from that guy and it's X and then repo and then X, X Repox. I don't even know how you'd say it. Larry has the right to change any of these names. So we're not married yeah. to anything. Uh, just want to always put that caveat out there. But Unknown is a really cool looking bad guy. and We want him to be a troop builder. And he's got these sleeve tattoos, right? And so oh. when we were in our meeting talking about it with, this was Mark Pennington, Ron Rudat, and Kirk Bazigian. I think it was Mark Pennington that said, wait, wait, wait. Instead of doing the actual tampos down the arms, what if that's part of the sculpt and it's a pattern like African scarification? I was like, wow, oh my that's god, cool. that's amazing! Yeah, yeah, like you guys have seen uh, the bad guy in Black Panther has him, for yeah. example. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just a, it's just a really intimidating thing, scarification. Like I look at people with scarification, I'm like, good god, that had to be so painful. But like you wear that with pride, you know. Oh yeah. Um, so I, so what I was thinking for unknown was we just do a few different sets of arms with different patterns of the scarification, right? So there's different kind of like maybe ranking or hierarchy amongst these guys. So yeah, things like that. Cool. I'd, I'd rather think of things like that as opposed to maybe different hands. We've got, uh, I just want to quickly, before I go too far from it, um, mm -hmm. I'll do a few more shout outs here in the chat. Brandon says, morning, ladies, sitting down to breakfast, dance monkeys and amuse me. <laughs> nice. uh, Brandon's a good guy. He's also a, uh, I won't give away what he does, but I don't want to upset him because he can put me away. <laughs> uh, then we've got <laughs> Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. Hello, everyone. Hello, Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. It's a great name. Uh, TJC, evening all. Welcome to the Slaughterhouse. Jeff says, I don't want a trigger finger on a small 3.75 figure. I can just imagine breaking off the fingers, but uh, that won't be a problem for you guys. And I'll very quickly, just before we touch on that, we'll say sharing the love. Oh, wow. Thanks, Articulator Chad. You're Thanks, all Chad. awesome people. Carson, thank you again for this project. Thank you for the super chat. Um, thank you, I brother. Have to thank Classified for, that's a good name too, Classified, yeah, for the super sticker. Just um, fits. Appreciated. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's talk about very quickly then. Uh, Fingers breaking. We're, that's not going to be a problem with your... Uh, Correct. Your that's, I'm really glad he brought that up because that's another one of the kind of innovations that Call Sign Longbow has been pioneering with the factory is they're printing on two different types of plastic. And I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to misspeak it. But one of them is the harder plastic and the other one's the softer plastic. And the softer plastic is definitely in use for the hands. Uh, the harder plastic is in use for like the accessories because you don't want them bending too much. It's just PVC and ABS, right? Is that how? Let me look it up. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go, go on. You JLS guys kill some time. Okay, I don't know if good. I said hi to JLS Comics yet, but hello, JLS Comics. Uh, good to have you in the chat. Uh, well, while you're looking up that, let's start with showing off some of the figures that have been unlocked already. Oh, hello, Roland. Hi, Rolando. Rolando Flores. How are hello. you, buddy? Welcome to the Slaughterhouse. Wave one, figure one unlocked. That must have unlocked in seconds, right? <laughs> it <laughs> it was... wouldn't have taken very long. Yeah, we went pretty quick, man. So, uh, wave one, figure one. Oh, did you find the information that you wanted to say about the plastic before we continue? I, I did not. We'll, we'll just go with Kins. We'll go with Kins. I, I think he's right. All right, it's it's a uh, it's on here now, so we can go back to it and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, the proof is here if if he did get it right or if he didn't. So, wave one, figure one, unlocked breacher, urban intervention specialist. Uh, and uh, concept courtesy of Gabriel Magnum. Mangum, sorry. Magnum is still pretty cool, but Mangum. Sorry for the uh, uh, mispronunciation. Oh, I read it as Magnum when I first saw the figure. Yeah, yeah Ma I mean, Magnum would have been cool, but it's definitely Mangum. <laughs> Mangum? Mangum? Uh, uh, all right, so quick. Uh, ABS, uh, actually... It has a it has a problem. It's when it's too thick, it deforms. So I think with right. the heads, you actually want to use PVC. The PVC is the softer material. So for the heads, the hands, uh, you're you're definitely going to want to use that PVC softer material. 
Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, I will come back to this in a second, but one of the problems that, uh, and we all know this being G.I. Joe fans, is that, you know, thumbs would break off. Uh, if In the case of Slaughter's Marauders, we've got whole hands that have snapped off. Now, I do want to say a caveat. Slaughter's Marauders were made in Brazil, though, and that's why those figures are so much lower quality. Uh, right, true. Uh, but it's still a uh, it is still an issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing the uh, thanks for bringing that back. Thanks. Good I heard back. a rumor. I heard a rumor that they were made in Brazil because Brazil were going to start producing their own figures, which they did. Um, and Hasbro, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Carson, because you'd know. Uh, we're thinking about possibly making them outside out of the U.S. and from there and having them make them so moving forward. So it was interesting, multiple multiple moving parts at the same time. So Giazio was licensed all over the world to multiple countries. And as soon as uh, Hasbro was done using the molds for a couple years worth of product, they would ship them off around the world. And so Brazil was already manufacturing action figures under the Giazio brand in Brazil. Yeah. Hasbro was always looking to diversify their manufacturing partnerships and save money where they could, but also not just be so dependent on one country or one set of factories. Which, so uh, Slaughter's Marauders, they actually, I think the first figure that came from Brazil was the Mail Order Rampage figure. I believe, okay. I believe that was manufactured down there and came up here. And Hasbro was happy enough with it that they gave him the chance to do the whole Slaughter's Marauders. Now, I believe vehicles were manufactured in the United States for a little bit. I believe the uh, Slaughter's Marauders vehicles were all manufactured in Brazil and the boxes were even printed in Brazil. Because if you look at the yeah. Slaughter's Marauders, Python Patrol, and maybe Tiger Force, those boxes are not the same quality. And if you ever tear them, God forbid, like the, the full color graphic peels off like an onion skin. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that. So the box quality, the vehicles, and the figures all came out of Brazil in the late 80s. So would that be wow. under Estrella then and not Hasbro? Or would it still be under Hasbro and then? I you know, I knew, I knew this when I was working on Chapter Six of Collecting the Art of GI Joe because <laughs> like you can't you can't retain everything, right? But so nah, for nah. like for right, a few months, questions. just for a few months, I was really deep in international. And everybody that knows me and my collecting habits knows I don't collect international. I don't allow myself to. And so this was like my first chance, and I really enjoyed it for those few months. I spent way too many thousands of dollars <laughs> doing this. But uh, but I definitely learned a lot because um, I thought it was Plasterima in Ar Argentina and then Estrella in Brazil. But again, I, sounds, I could be could be wrong. That well, sounds I right. Didn't even, but I will consult Volume Six and give you a definite answer. I didn't even really when know I get about Volume Six in the mail. Stuff. I'll look it up. Fun School, Estrella, uh, and uh, Plasterima. I didn't know any, about any of those until I was like an uh, adult collector, mm -hmm. um, and then. And then when I found out that Sarge had a few international releases and then Supercop, I was like, oh, my collection isn't over yet. I must have all of these too. Yeah. But, the, uh, yeah. the Plasta, there's Plastorama, I, it looks like, was out of Argentina. That's correct. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And then Fun School, I guess, was India and Russia or something. Right. Uh, right. I think just manufactured in India, but also distributed in Russia. But again, I'm no expert. Probably because I usually hear Fun School India more than I hear Fun School Russia. But some of the cards are done in the Russian. Anyway, it's, I'm not. I'm not a super expert either. Somebody, somebody yeah. is going to watch this video later on and correct. Be like, me. look at these. Listen, to these amateurs. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. They have no clue super what they're talking about. Show. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So let's get back to because we do have a professional in here that can tell us all about this stuff. Well, so hey, Zazel, Zazel yeah, is buddy. it possible for me to show, to share my screen with you? Yeah, mate. All right. I'm going to share screen and we're going to go to the left side and please forgive me for anything that's inappropriate on my screen. <laughs> okay. No, there, there really shouldn't be anything inappropriate anyway. Uh, all right. So this is what I've been working on today. Uh, this would be cropped to this little border right here. That's right? cool. So these are the little graphics that I'm going to be putting out over. They're square uh, formatted for social media. But so there's a look at our first figure. This is the one that I designed when I was a kid. And that uh, I've been working with these uh, guys on since spring of 2020. This was my crazy COVID project where I started running around and filming with them. Um, yeah. So anyway, after a year and a half and producing this thing successfully, everybody wanted us to make more. And so, as you know, we took submissions from the crowd. And we got 177 submissions and then we got together 
And for three days, we whittled these down from 177 to our top 16. So this is the first one. Uh, this is Breacher. Now this oh, is that looks cool. Thanks, man. This is a wave one yes. figure one. So this is actually the second figure that we unlocked, right? Because Rotella was the automatic unlock. So here's our second funded figure. And his name is Breacher. Uh, he's an urban intervention specialist. Now, this is a really cool character with an amazing logo. So I think this logo is going to go far for us. Um, oh. This guy was called Cadaver. We've, we've turned him into cadavers. He's, they're silent infiltrators. They're, they're basically hunter-killer, quiet types, mysterious. They live among you. They're like the Crimson Guard. They could be your neighbor kind of thing. Um, but I love the iconic mask that he's got, and that's our already translating across other uh, figures that we're working on. So if you look in the bottom right corner, you can always see who these concepts were by. So shout out to Chad LaForce on that one. Mm -hmm. And he does some beautiful art. Chad Huckle? Uh, Ch Chad Huckle? No, that was Chad LaForce. Oh, LaForce. Okay. I yeah. thought you said Chad from the full force. And I'm like, isn't that a guy named Chris? <laughs> I got nope, it. nope. That's, uh, Chad Huckle is my boy that helps with the books and has done hundreds, if not thousands of hours of image restoration with me on those. Okay. And so Chad, Chad's my boy. And I usually do drop his name on every podcast because <laughs> I'm so grateful. Um, anyway, so this is by Ted Terranova. And Damselfly, she's amazing. That little white button on the back of her backpack, you push that and the wings fold down. So it's much nice. more compact. Her little um, grenade launcher, if you look at the illustrations in the bottom left corner, it's a single shot grenade launcher where the thing kind of splits open and folds forward and you can stick the rounds in. So she's wearing the rounds around her thigh on a bandolier. You can see on her left leg there. Yeah, uh, I love cool. her mask. It's kind of similar to what we had going on with the cadaver mask. It's different, but similar. And so that's that's a brilliant design. That one's already funded. So that's the fourth figure that we funded. Then we got probably maybe the crowd favorite, Soul Eagle Guerrero. Yes. My David it's definitely Manuel my favorite. Martin. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that love wrestling and have not gotten that itch scratched in the three and three quarter inch figure scale. Other now, than Zangief and Sergeant Slaughter and like the Fridge's yeah. WrestleMania 2 cameo, this is the true wrestler. Wrestler. Nice. Not out of the video game, not out of something else. This is this right. is it. Okay. So I wanted to I wanted to highlight the fact that his uh, championship belt is removable. Uh, so that's in the bottom yes. left corner there. You'll, you'll note it's got several rounds, uh, kind yeah, of like yeah. long sniper rounds. And then he's got magazines on the left-hand side and grenades on his right-hand side. So that's going to be a removable cool accessory. Um, he was funded. He was our fifth figure. He was the fourth figure from wave one. And so then we moved into wave two. This guy was El Castigador. And we turn him into Los Castigadores because this is our another of our army builders. And so what I'd like to do for him is a removable helmet and multiple heads once again, kind of like they did oh, with the Crim cool. Crimson Guard in the 2000s release, right? So that this can be uh, an army builder with unique uh, faces and personalities and, you know, some representation in there. Again, he's got a ton of body armor on. Uh, so I think this could be one of those figures that also has females within the same body type. As yeah. uh, as great white that I was mentioning, but and it's the I ghost think, ops, it's the ghost ops uh, style design. Yeah, he's he's gonna be he's gonna be a popular troop builder. I think he'll he awesome. might he might be our most popular troop builder. We'll mm -hmm. see. Um, and so she is one of my favorites because it was designed by Alexander, uh, who's a ten year old that was at Joe Fest. This was like a magical yeah. moment at Joe Fest to meet. I met four of the people that uh, had submitted designs had been selected and I was able to reveal that to him at Joe Fest. And so that was really, really special. Like I remember the hair on my arm standing up, like it was a moment, you know? Um, so this is uh, she's an all black ninja ninja. He's got a robotic leg, but Alexander was very careful to tell me that it was a, a, a silent robotic leg. So oh, it's not going <laughs> to, it's not going to break his surprise or anything. Um, we just got it. I should know this name. Uh, I think it's Mark, but I don't want to. I don't want to misspeak on it. We just got in this awesome comic book art. One of the best parts of this campaign is that people are just starting to send stuff in, or starting mm -hmm. to create stuff because they're inspired by. I think it's the story of it that we're bringing the old creators back in, and we've taken uh, community submissions. It like I think it feels like a campaign that's like really open to everybody and wants everybody to participate. And I mean that like 100%. If you want to draw these characters and send them to me, please do. I'm going to be making a video. We've got a guy out of New Zealand that's making a rock track for us. He's already shared me several rough, oh, uh, rough cool. drafts with me. And it's it's rocking, dude. It sounds great. And so I'm going to cut a music video to that song. The more art assets I have, the better. So anybody out there that's listening that loves any one of these characters, 
please, please, please send in some artwork. Um, quick spoiler alert. I just got this in. Ooh. This is, oh, this is great white versus clanker and tank. And every one of these drawings like makes this thing come to life so much more for me. Like I literally, man, I've had so many emotional moments throughout this, um, the last two years of working on this. Like every time I get something in, it's really just a magical moment for me. And now it's like transferred to where people that are backing are giving me these moments of like just real, real joy, you know? Because look at so cool. he brought Clanker to life. We didn't really know what Clanker was going to look like, right? Let me oh, pull up. Hang on. We got just very quickly. Uh -huh. Look who made hey it. guys, apologies for getting here a little bit late. No, no problem at all, brother. Um, I uh, hey, David Walker, uh, that sadly passed away, and today was his wake. Mm. And oh, right. Went a little bit longer, and I try to make it on time, but. Okay. Sorry, brother. Been yeah. One of my good dudes, and I'm glad with you guys and i'm really excited good to see you david yeah yes. good to see you david thanks for thanks for coming in uh sorry that uh, the day hasn't been uh you know that great for you i don't i never know what to say in these moments but it was uh, something uh, out of the blue and i you know it happens yeah uh, but yep. i'm i'm glad that here was there friends were there and we celebrated an amazing human being so up, up, up there for Trevor Bennett, and again, I'm just happy to be here. I finally made it, so you know, let's not be owners <laughs> and just hang out. And again, apologies Excellent. for being a little late. No I problem at all, man. I haven't even shown this <clears throat> off yet. There it is. That thing is beautiful. Well, David, why don't you why don't you run us through uh, your character uh, and the inspiration behind it? I'd love to hear it. It's a favorite of mine. I appreciate it, actually, um, and I told this to Carson. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited, and sometimes I lost for words. Um, so the inspiration comes from a lot of things. Um, G.I. Joe and Transformers were my favorite lines as a kid. Transformers, uh, being from Puerto Rico, it was kind of difficult. They were very expensive, but the G.I. Joes were a little bit more accessible, and I always loved that it was very uh, diverse. It was people from all over the world. Um, so when I saw Carson and his project, which I thought it was great, I actually had another idea instead of the luchador. I actually had a female assassin that her parents were, uh, her dad was a matador and, she, and her mom was a revolutionary. Um, but while I was ready to just submit um, the female assassin, I was like, dude, but it would be so dope to have a wrestler. Like, oh, yes, yeah. we have Sergeant Slaughter, and Sergeant yes. Slaughter obviously is a wrestler, but Sergeant yep. Slaughter's character is based around military. Yes. Right. And I thought, would it be awesome to have like, like a, a, a luchador, like a wrestler wearing a mask, kind of like El Santo, Dr. Wagner? Or even wrestler from Puerto Rico like uh, El Bronco Numero Uno, Los Super Medicos. So Puerto Rico, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, in the early 70s, late 70s and early 80s, wrestling was huge in Puerto Rico. Was, yep. Right. Yes, super big. And, and Carlos Colon had uh, yeah. he wrestled. He was a promoter he, there, yeah. Yeah, and he was like the Hulk Hogan, the top baby face. He wrestled kind of like Dusty Rose. He wrestled um, uh, um, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper. He had a – the feud with Roddy Piper, if you guys ever want to see something that will definitely not fly today, look right. for his <laughs> promos in yeah. 1982 to wrestle Carlos Colon. It was downright stuff that it will make any – company go what no we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i think the von erics wrestled there i think gorilla monsoon was there for a while there's a lot that goes on there and sorry i'm a i'm a admittedly an obsessive no, hey, wrestling fan no. you mentioned something that is true gorilla and this is a lot of a uh, thing that a lot of people didn't know so one of the big promoters over there victor jovica was rumored to be the illegitimate son of gorilla monsoon oh yeah okay. and one of the reasons um the WWE, back then WWF, had a lot of um, interaction with WWC, Capital Sports Promotion, is because of 
the interaction with Gurul Mansoon. Now, this is just speculation. Obviously, I don't know anybody that told me that this is true, but this is the rumor back in Puerto Rico when, since I was a kid. Um, and Victor Jovica actually opened a promotion called IWA, EWA, which got huge in the early 2000s to the point that they brought in The Rock, they brought in the Dolly Boys and came for one event that right. was fully packed. And to, let me tell you, uh, Puerto Ricans can get rowdy, specifically yeah. with, the, with the heels. So, yeah. but okay. When, what, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. Please. No, I, I just, uh, because the image is gone now, I maybe I'm overthinking it. Because I never overthink wrestling, right, Hazel? But the belt. <laughs> yeah, okay. I see the Stone Cold Steve. Tell me if this is the inspiration. I see the Stone Cold Steve Austin smoking skull in the middle and the winged eagle from the 1990s around it. Did I overthink this, David, or is that the inspiration? Um, you're, you're close, but I thought about Mexican wrestling, and I also thought about the culture in, in, in Mexico. Oh, okay. um, my, my sister is married to a, a Mexican, and... It's been amazing because a lot of people don't know this, but yes, we have different cultures. And <laughs> right. um, one of the things that I learned specifically about, you know, uh, the, the meaning of eagles and the sun and different uh, native uh, Mexican uh, Americans. And that always caught my attention. Plus, it, 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 like I seen in movies, because here's, what a lot of people don't know. El Santo was one of the biggest uh, wrestling uh, personalities to come over from Latin America. El Santo was known everywhere around the world, obviously, except the U.S., but all around the world, everybody would know it. Everybody was um, like a silly movie because El Santo made a lot of B kind of like low budget movies where he's fighting zombies or mummies or whatever. Right. So he was kind of like a superhero. And when mm. I was a kid, even though the movies were older, they will replay those in local channels. Mm -hmm. So to me, automatically, I'll see a wrestler with a mask. And I thought they were superheroes. Okay, so yeah. Warner, El Santo, to me as a kid, it was, wow, the greatest wrestlers in the world. And then in Puerto Rican wrestling, we had a bunch of different wrestlers that were wore masks. Bronco Numero Uno, eh, Los Supermedicos, Los Invaders. And they were huge. They were the biggest baby face. And everybody will just, you know, uh, I'm telling you, everybody thought it was real. Because, yeah. Um, and, and I know I'm talking about wrestling. And this, we're supposed to talk about, obviously, the stuff that we love. And it's yeah, Joe. No, but, it's relevant. It's and, part of it now. Yeah. In, in in Puerto Rico, like people thought wrestling was real and wrestling yeah. was kind of like mid south wrestling here in the United States where it was yeah. presented as a sport and a little bit uh a little bit more real. Like you will be, believe the the rivalries. And that was the way it was in Puerto Rico to the point that I remember going the first time in nineteen ninety one and I was just like eight years, nine years old. Mm -hmm. And I saw the um, the demolition right, come yes. he exactly. painted wearing the whole outfit that he wore at WWE mm -hmm. and beat the hell out of the baby face. Uh, Uragan Castillo and Miguel Perez to the point that it was a bloody mess that my father was like, what is this? Uh, this is not what, <laughs> what are you watching? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it was that important. So when I thought about something that could be for the line. I was like, okay, it's got to be something that has charisma. It's got to be something that represent Latin American culture. Obviously, everybody um, knows luchadors because of Mexican wrestling, La Triple A yeah. and all that type of stuff. But I know as a fact, growing in Puerto Rico most of my life, I was like, no, wrestling is huge here too. Yes. And I thought it's like, it would be awesome to just have this soldier that actually went to the army but mm -hmm. his father was a famous Mexican wrestler. Yeah. And his mom was a military nurse. Here's the, way, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, no, go ahead, please. Here's the beauty of Saul Guerrero, right? Is that when we look at he he's a big buff guy and he's got the luchador mask. In in North America, we're trained to think of the luchadors as like smaller, high flyers, Rey Mysterio, Juventud Guerrera, you know, those kinds of wrestlers. But yep. in in the but a lot of luchadors are not really like that. And I didn't know this until less than 10 years ago when I started watching Lucha Underground. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Mil Mascaras is jacked. And he's my, like, like this guy. And that's how mm -hmm. a lot of the luchadors are. They're not necessarily all high flyers. And, and then you introducing this is huge for me. So nice. Instance, um, a lot of people don't know me, Muertes. He, he, he's actually from Puerto Rico. And he's known as Ricky Banderas. Great person. I met him um, in real life years ago. I'm pretty sure. Really? He okay. Yeah. But he's a super, he was super over as a baby face. His character right. wasn't dark at all. He was a legit baby face, uh, good looking dude, long hair. And he was um, the good guy. And his name was Ricky Banderas. And his mm. finisher was uh, the sharpshooter. And he called it. What's that? There you I go. Because he's a huge fan of Bret Hart, like any other wrestling fan would be because he's my favorite wrestler and I have a picture right here with him. Um, nice. Your favorite, favorite wrestler is Bret Hart? Yes, Bret the Hinman Hart. Legit. Uh -oh. like, uh, I loved wrestling when I was a kid, but... Zazel, mute me. I'm from Canada and I love Bret the Hitman Hart. And and met him four years ago. He Bret the Hitman Hart when I was a kid made it look real and he's the reason I believed in it when I was a kid. And, and he was an amazing baby face because he wasn't like your typical superhero Ultimate Warrior Hulk Hogan. He was right. more a little bit more grounded. And yes. he, and the way he was a baby face because he was smart. He was all mm. smart, his opponent. So I believed it. Trust me. When I was a kid, G.I. Joe, Transformers, and wrestling were my thing. So... Yes, uh, that's it. That's I'm also obsessed with Transformers, room. so let's let's talk after the stream. <laughs> we'll do a after the break room podcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, yeah, they're good. Uh, by the way, there. I don't think I answered. So the title belt, I wanted to incorporate. Yes, the skull, sort of like Stone Cold, because who didn't like Stone Cold, right? Uh, right. But also, I wanted the wings because of how, the importance of eagles in the Latin American community, specifically in Mexico. So I wanted to do something like that. And because I named him so Eagle Guerrero, and obviously Guerrero, every wrestling fan will think of the great family, uh, Familia Guerrero, because yeah. they were amazing uh, wrestlers that they changed the game. They came up with a lot of stuff that now is used. But a lot of people don't know Guerrero means warrior. Right. So that was okay. the reason how great their name was, because they were the Guerrero family, the warrior family. And um, a lot of, uh, of everybody will just, you know, <laughs> cheer for them because they were the Guerrero. They never gave up. The warriors, even though that was their last name. So I wanted to play homage to that. Yeah. But I mentioned soul because the song is very important in any um, um uh, um, I don't want to say culture, but it's just it's since the beginning of time, the sun has been important. Uh, well, that's right, mankind. And yeah, in Taino culture, which is uh, the native um, Caribbeans from Puerto Rico, the sun was very important. That was their god, kind of like every other old, obviously ancient uh, civilization. And I wanted to play on that because it's also very important into Mexican culture, the sun. Yeah. So I was like, then I got to name him Sol Guerrero, the warrior sun. And that's where the name comes from. And the eagle was like, well, I got to put something there that makes him a North American and also at the same time represents Mexican culture. And I was like, the eagle. So Sol right. Eagle Guerrero. And that's where the name comes from. So Carson, every good baby face needs a heel. Uh, mm -hmm. Surely, there must be a foil for uh, for Saul. I, I don't. I don't think in the yeah. first. I don't think in the first four waves we have somebody capable of beating Saul in a hand to hand <laughs> combat beatdown. Now he might get ganged up on by twelve cadavers, and we'll see how that goes. You Just know, grab Zangief from nineteen ninety three. We're good, <laughs> right? So I actually, um, this is something that I wanted to mention to Carson live. So I want to do like a little comic strip of Sol Guerrero wrestling before he gets called to arms. Wait, you want to do that? 
Yes. We, and- we've all, oh my God. That Okay, so that's crazy because we're working on a script that I don't believe I've shared with you. I've shared it with like six or eight people, so it's hard to track who I've shared it with. And <laughs> like I was saying earlier in the podcast, I just share everything. We've written 30 pages that introduce each of these characters being called back to action. And literally the story for Soul is that he's in a ring kicking somebody's butt. And this military guy like comes down the aisle, waits patiently for him to put the other guy to sleep. He's got him in a choke hold and the other guy kind of taps out. He stands up, you know, he grabs his belt from the corner. He's crossing over the ropes. The other guy's like being carted off, like in the background. And they're like, we need, we need you to come back in. And so the story for why he's wearing his championship belt is like, he moved on from the military to do this thing that he always wanted to pursue, which was become a championship wrestler. And so the, the military, I, I don't want to give you guys too many spoilers, but <laughs> su- suffice it to say, there's a really good reason why all of these characters are being recalled. Something big has happened and they have to basically bring all these guys back into action. I'm not going to give any more spoilers. Like I want to tell you the whole script right now. It's just what I do. So your story will have good guys and bad guys. Like it's oh, absolutely. Like Joe versus Cooper kind of thing. Perfect. Absolutely. And, and what's turning into the bad guy faction, at least for now, because there could be multiple threats, right? But the one big threat that's caused this cataclysmic event that is making the government recall these people to service is caused by, we don't have them branded or named yet, but it's the, the, the force that's represented by that skull icon that's on cadaver that also appears in uh, Los, Los Castigadores' chess pieces, now that icon. And that icon is going to pop up. When you look at Damselfly, she's got a similar mask and there's others that also have similar kind of branding. So we've got an emerging enemy threat that is going to establish themselves as very powerful uh, in the first several pages of this, pages of this book. Now, oh, we talked about cool. this at the convention, though. This could be an audio book that we record with voiceover talent and then do style frames for. So every scene, you might have a couple style frames that show you what the images would look like in your head, and you kind of do the in-betweening on that and and we'll probably also feature character bios character profiles so each podcast that you download you'll also have like a little zip file of all the images of all the characters featured in that story along with some style frames that's kind of my current thinking for it we might end up still doing comic books there's there's a guy that is a ceo of a comic book company that i'm a huge fan of that has agreed to help me recruit and budget and figure out like bringing an actual professional level comic book to life so um we're working on it david i'll I'll send you this script man if you want the spoilers i'll send it to you no i i and and if you don't mind i can say be alive is that okay i thought yeah yeah of course you guys can make it even shorter it's just um sol guerrero having a wrestling match with el Cerdo Callejero, which translation will be rope pick, but obviously it's not going to be him. Okay. Uh, right. and, yeah, and and he wins, but instead of an agent coming up to him, I think it will be uh, funnier and a little bit more charismatic. That is Homer showing up at the window, sending him a message, and he picks okay. it up. <laughs> and he recognized the, the – Obviously, the, the pigeon is like, oh, my little friend, my little amigo, and just yeah. looks at the message. I think that will That's work. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Think- so so what I want to do, you, you guys know Larry Hama is writing all the bios for these, right? So right. I spoke with them earlier this week. Uh, Ron, Mark, Kirk, and Larry all have their kickoff packets with all 16 characters. Ritello's done, so don't count him. And the 18th one, he's, man, I'm so bad with spoilers. I haven't even revealed the big surprise to Kirk Bazigian yet because I don't want to reveal it to him unless I know it's like, it's going to happen. So, so number 18 was not sent in the packets. That's, I got to stop talking about that. But, uh, (laughs) but so Larry's working on the dossiers and I really, really want Larry to write the secret origins comic book too. Right. So we would have someone uh, write. We're, we're already drafting the script for the book that introduces all the characters and how they come together. It doesn't do backstories and that kind of thing. You're dropped into the moment and things are happening. It's not looking back and saying, how did these people get to be who they are? And I definitely think that's a story that needs telling, too. And so I'm going to do my best to compel Larry to just dig in on this thing because he's as of now, he's done on G.I. Joe with number 300 that comes out in December with IDW. And uh, he's got, he's literally, he's got the bandwidth. I'm like, this is lightning in a bottle. This is crazy how it's lining up at this moment. And so I just got to, 
hopefully he enjoys the characters and enjoys writing the dossiers and it's an easier sell, you know, but I really, I really, really want him to do the origins book, the backstories. And so David, maybe you end up working with him like to develop okay. souls. Don't even whole, say that because whole backstory. Gonna, uh, That's exciting. I, I log out. I'm going to start crying. Uh, my buddy my buddy joe that's been the primary uh writer on the script i told him i'm sending it to larry and he's like oh my god like he's freaking out it's oh i did freak out when you told me that trust me Uh, yeah i told my girlfriend to uh her despair sadly because i told her every day he's like oh my god this is i was gonna look at this and she's like i know it's okay it's all right (laughs) so i understood yep he's he's got your stuff man it's at his house right now so Um, and can I say this from Larry Hammond? A lot of people obviously know him from G.I. Joe, but he did an amazing job at Wolverine as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. and a lot of people don't give him that enough credit. And let me tell you this. Um, the reason I learned another language was comic books. And I was a big X-Men fan as a kid. That's me why too. I started um, reading in English. And even if I didn't know what it meant, I will sit down with a dictionary just to awesome. understand. Awesome. And I was nine years old, but I wanted to understand. Mm-hmm. And the artists were amazing, you know, like John Romita Jr., uh, Jim yeah. Lee, obviously everybody knows from the 90s, but back then Mark Silvestri was doing uh, mm-hmm. on X-Men. Uh, John Romita Jr., uh, Daredevil, he was amazing as well. He and did Spider-Man was, too uh, with uh, Straczynski. Oh, he's uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and there were a lot of amazing artists back then. Even Rob Liefeld that a lot of people uh, give a little bit uh, of a hard time because, oh, he doesn't draw feet. It's like he was 15 when he was doing this stuff. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Everybody can do that. And so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, with, with the X-Men, I remember just, you know, being intertwined. And and, and Larry Hama was writing Wolverine. And I remember picking the comic book and if he wrote, because when John Basima and Claremont were uh, writing the comic book, yes, it was a tough, cool dude, right? It was clean his wood with claws. That's what it was. Right. But Larry <laughs> Hama brought something else. He brought a side to Wolverine that now a lot of people just take it as, oh, that's just part of the character. Yeah, it was Larry Hama that humanized this character made him uh, um, not just the anti-hero, but make him this like, he's not an animal, he's a human being and he's been right. yeah. And yeah. I was compelled about it because again, I love the baby face. So I'm always gonna share for the baby face. I just wanna shout out this comment uh, from Payne's Toy Samples. Uh, okay, I just backed one figure and got Rotello too. It's just not my scale, but wanted to support creators. So yeah, every little bit is a is going to help a uh, help That's this awesome. project. Uh, picking yeah, up thank two. You. Thank yeah. you. If if, so if I any side project, you, I don't have any great stories to tell. That's a great story. I, I don't have any stories that great, but I I, I did want to say that um, I appreciate the way uh, Carson has structured this. Um, of of course. You know, you're paying the, the, the creators up front. Of, of course you are, because that's the kind of guy you are. Um, but uh, I mentioned earlier today that I like to support the people that I care about. And this is an opportunity to for me to support Carson, for me to support Ron and Larry and all of those guys that are so important to our history, uh, to support David right here, um, who uh, who's done something amazing, and all of the, the other creators... Um, the other fans that have uh, uh, brought something in. So uh, yeah, this was this was like one of the easiest decisions for for something to back that that I've seen all year. This that that was an easy choice. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to thank Carson for for doing it uh, and David for for coming up with a, such a wicked cool design. Yes. Um, thank you, Brian. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that, man. I thank you, so you know. This was just going to be a chapter in the book. This was not going to be a real toy. This was just, you know, a way to talk to them and have them doing something while I was interviewing them. And, you know, just I I wanted it to make for a more interesting documentary because that was my plan out of the gate. But working with these guys and them all having such a good time with it and expressing a little bit of sadness at the end that it was over. I was like, no, it's not over. Yeah, I can't I can't let it be over. I got to say this. This is why this is genius. Okay. Because 
you're bringing back the old guys, all right? Operation Recall, really good name. Uh, you're doing it, uh, you, you go through the process that they used when they were originally creating these toys back in the 80s. So we've got kind of a retro feel, but you're also bringing in new blood and new ideas like guys like David, that side of the screen. So it is simultaneously retro and new. And that's genius. And I, I love it. Exactly. I, I'm, I, I could not be more thrilled. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. It's it's a it's an evolving concept. None of it happened overnight. It was basically like just me thinking about this thing for a year and a half as I was working with them on Rotello. And, uh, you know, just little bit by little bit, the big idea assembled, you know, piece by piece by piece. I think, you know, the fact that I gave Ron an out. Ron did not have to do Rotello. He could have done any other figure that he wanted to do back in the day and that he didn't get the chance to do. And Ron chose to do Rotello. And it made like that year and a half so much more fun and more amazing for me that once we decided, okay, we're not just going to do that for me, we're going to make more figures, then it was like a no brainer. I've got to give other collectors the opportunity that I had that was unreal, still is unreal to, to have a, a case full of Rotello figures back here you know, the original sculpt and a resin copy and a paint master and to have all the paperwork and the, the painting from Doug Hart. Like it's a, it's, it's a collector's wet dream. It's crazy. It doesn't happen. It's insane. Right. It's literally insane. Like I know I'm a little yeah. crazy and this is the personification of that. So for me to then be able to give that joy to David, right? Dave, when I met David at Joe Fest, he was at my booth and uh, he started talking to me. I was like, hold up. You did a luchador because there was three luchadors for the record. <laughs> There's there was three wrestling concepts and David's was the best. I, I I'm sorry to the other two. I don't mean to like prioritize one over the other, but there was three, <laughs> and his was the one that I responded to the most. You know, and so I can in the meeting, one. in the meeting we had with Kirk and Ron, and uh, let's see, Mark, they were. I, well, I'll say this is the one figure that I think I lobbied for maybe the hardest. You know, to try to to try to compel them to, to fall in love with it because it's all a negotiation, right? There's four people in the room and we've all got a voice. And ultimately there was some things that we uh, had Kirk just run with, like he was the boss, you set the strategy for the line and you steer us towards picking the right figures. But we all had opinions of which figures we really wanted to see come to life. And this was the one for me that I definitely lobbied for. So it was really cool when I met David and I was like, oh, hold up, hold up. You're Soul Eagle Guerrero. And then uh, so he pulled out his sketch pad. He like dropped his backpack, pulled out his sketch pad, started showing me other drawings. I was like, holy shit, you're really talented. I took a photo on the spot of one of his other drawings. I was like, can I send this to Mark and Ron? Because we might use this for something else. Yes. So, I don't know use it. I don't yeah. So <laughs> it, it was just amazing. It, this project is like the gift that keeps giving. It's so many good moments. And the thing is, like with this being successful and us having seven figures funded already, I know for the next year and a half, I'm gonna have a blast. Like watching these yeah. figures get made, watching the process all over again, and being able to share it with David and the rest, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a great year and a half. And it carries the Guerrero name. Just imagine that as a wrestling fan. Yes. Yeah. There's that, so that, much that. connective tissue here. Yeah. And, and, and again, that's why I chose the name, because like, Guerrero means warrior, and at the same time, I was playing homage to one of the greatest, uh, I would say the greatest Latin America um, yeah. wrestling family in the world that have done so much for the business. And I saw Eddie Guerrero wrestle live, and, and I saw um, his brothers in Puerto Rico, because uh, I will sneak out. And yeah. mom probably and, Chavo, and Chavo as well. Yeah, and when my mom will understand English, she will probably be upset knowing that I will skip school and I will sneak <laughs> in uh, the wrestling shows. Um, but nice. it was it was it was amazing. And I wanted to say something, and if you guys would give me the time, um, when since I was uh, living in Puerto Rico, I will hear your guys' names, all of you, um, and I will see your your work, whether it was uh, the pages or the YouTube channels. And I was living in Puerto Rico uh, before the hurricane hit. Uh, one of the reasons I came here in uh, the U.S. was after the hurricane hit. Um, we, we, my girlfriend and I lost everything, but we managed to, you know, move on and we got to continue going on. And it blows my mind that all these people that I will see their names online, and that have done so much to uh, an amazing community. That I have never 
even dreamt of being part of. Um, it just is, is, is a great feeling and it blows my mind and I'm super grateful. And well, people know your name now, David. Yeah, and, but I am. And, and it's not just um, the the whole amazing thing about the Operation Rico, but just going to Jofa for the first time and putting a face in all these amazing creators and all these passionate people who were super receptive and super nice. Nobody was nobody was mean. Everybody was fine. And I was able to share a little bit of a, either a cold one or with Carson, I share a little bit of Puerto Rican rum because I yep. mentioned this to Hoodie. I said that on the chat. I'm bringing the rum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it was, it was really good cool too. To me. Like, th this is why um, I have to go back to Joe Fest every year. I really enjoyed mm. meeting you. I enjoyed hanging out with you. And I saw those drawings as well. That uh, you just, you do great work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I loved it. I, I really did. Yeah, he's a super talented guy, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. But I think you guys are amazing. I think um, everything around the community with, um, pardon me if I'm, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Cecil, right? Zazel. Cecil. Okay. My bad. I read it in Spanish, but, no, but that's okay. you guys have been doing and, and listen, and I told this to Sergeant Slaughter when I met him for the first time two years ago at a convention, I said, nice. he, he was super nice. And I show, I did an artwork that he signed and I'll share it with you later on. And he was telling me that he's like, yeah, I appreciated you guys coming now. And I was like, no, you don't understand. You were one of my favorite G.I. Joes and my friends hit. And they were like, why? Because you were real and all of all the others weren't. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was like, snake eyes. I'm like, sorry, you slaughter. We beat them. Right. Was, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, Put them in a headlock. And they would say, Cobra Commander and Destro and Sartan, which is my favorite. But I was like, no, yeah. you don't understand. Sergeant Slaughter would win. They yeah. were like, what do you mean? And I was like, Sergeant Slaughter is real. All the others are gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I mean, even even cartoon Sergeant Slaughter would still beat everybody's butt. Yes, including right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nemesis Enforcer. Shout out! I, to I agree with all of that. You're not going to get a disagreement from me. Yeah. <laughs> this is one for the USSA, dude. I love that. I was doing that as a kid. Yeah, that played that played pretty well at the movie theater. I think we all got all got a chuckle out of that because I think what did he do? Like four or five straight elbows in a row. Yeah, right. I think people started freestyling. Once he got done, people just kept saying it, but adding different things on it. Yeah, uh, I, this I, one's for James Cavanaugh. <laughs> <laughs> he has such an awesome voice. Yeah, yeah. He has. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's the chin. Voice. It's the chin and the voice, man. It's you the know? voice. That voice sounds so cool. It was made for. Yeah. Like, yeah. Imagine Sergeant Slaughter even in the cartoon with any other voice. It's just. Perfect. Um, we all go home or no one goes home. That hit me when I was a kid. I was like, yeah, he's, he's right. his friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, he makes you want to go into battle with him, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I will die like 10 seconds after you go into battle. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll be right there. I'll be yeah, right there. I won't last very long, but I'll be right there. We're starting slaughter. We all well, go David, home gonna... no one goes home. You got a pretty cool voice yourself, David. And uh, when I finally do get this figure in hand, uh, I want to use it for the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship, which is basically just me playing with toys. It's not weird. It's not <laughs> no, weird. It, uh, no, I, I've seen a couple of videos and I love them, so don't worry about it. Oh, cool. oh, if we uh, if we ever do, oh my God, this is a this is an ask here, David. I'm putting you on the spot. If we do the audio book, will you be the voice of Soul? Yes, 100. percent Okay, you got to be. That voice is amazing, <laughs> right? Yeah, I will. I will. I, I'll put on that. Awesome. Carlos going on a little. Carlos go <laughs> on. <laughs> That'll be cool. fun. I see that happening. I really do. Like, I think there's a, there's a high probability that we're going to do something like that. So I have plenty of ideas to just like help you out, man. You you heard me on the Joe Fest, and yeah, I love it. I don't care. Like like uh, like a friend of mine was asking, says, "Oh man, that's awesome. Are they going to pay you?" It's like, yes, they're going to pay me with an amazing opportunity that no one else. Yeah. can't just have and and it's, it's it's about the community it's about the fans and that to me were is worth more than anything yeah i agree 100 yeah. percent. i've Go i've ahead. sunk a measurable money in time i got a little bit passionate i got teary i'm, I'm sorry no, no it's, it's good, good dude. Hug, 
I've teared up a lot over the last couple of years. There's been a lot of moments like that. In all sincerity, like for real, I've teared up many, many times, man. Oh, yeah. um, just because it's unreal. It's like hard to believe that it's actually happening and it keeps happening. I'm like, what? It's, it's either it's, that it's or just ninjas cutting onions. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ninjas cutting onions. They're after some shadow and snake eyes, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, just in the corner trying to embarrass sure, you yeah. by cutting onions. Yeah, it's like, leave me alone. Uh, that's hilarious. Well, yeah, it keeps happening, man. It's like this thing just keeps snowballing. It's incredible. So, did you want to share your screen again, Carson? Yeah, I've got I've got a couple other. Um, let me see. Share screen. 3D. There we go. All right. So I'll back up for just a second and show David the new graphics that I'm working on yeah. for his character. So, David, can you see that? Yes, I can. It looks All right. There's your boy. He's unlocked. So obviously, it'll be cropped down to the square. You know, just like that. And we're going to share that over social media. But I'm also going to add this to the story on the Kickstarter so that there's a really quick visual explanation of who everybody is, what every character looks like, and at what point they'll get funded. So yours is already funded. Um, then I was showing Los Costigadores. Uh, so for the bad guys, they're all on a primarily black background. For the good guys, they're all on a primarily white background. So that's one of the things you'll notice about these graphics. Cadavers is our first troop builder. And let's see, Los Castigadores is our second troop builder. And what I was talking about was doing a removable helmet, but then offering probably three different head sculpts for different ethnicities and maybe different sexes. We might do a female version of this one as well. Um, so then we unlock at, what was this? This is wave two, figure two. So 180, I think is where we unlocked. And then our next unlock will be Bear Claw. So we've got to hit 210 for him. You're well on the way. It's a foregone yeah. conclusion. We're getting there, man. We're getting there. I, I think, you know, I've taken a lot of feedback from the community and I'm taking it to heart. And so there'll be some tweaks that are being made. Uh, this is our next unlock after that. So this is Clanker and Tank. And so this was drawn by a 12 year old, you know, so there's some feedback from the crowd where it's like, well, I can hardly visualize what he's going to look like. And it's like, well, he might look like that guy that's sitting there doing battle with Great White, right? Like you... I'm, I'm asking a lot of people to be able to visualize, uh, for instance, a 12-year-old's concept in the hand of these creators, how and amazing that's a that would be. on a Galapagos turtle? Yeah, so there's a genetically engineered Galapagos turtle, and he has a saddle because you can ride him because he's that big. That's cool. <laughs> I just see that. Now I think though. his camera. There's the saddle right there. He's also got a couple <laughs> missiles right here. You know? got it, bro. Very cool. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that's so anyway. Uh, this is this is a drawing that I actually just got in from Mark Pennington of a potential turtle helmet. So when he's not wearing his, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, let me close that out. So he called he called him Colonel Galapagos, but I think he's just being funny. But anyway, so when he doesn't have the armor on, I love this little tortoise helmet that he's got there. So, so I'm basically just going through and creating these, and then we'll be teasing these out two characters at a at, per day for like the next nine days. We'll show off all. 18 characters maybe we might not show the 18th character because that's that's really probably the last surprise that i'm gonna really hold close to the chest but uh, so the other thing we talked about was the kickstarter exclusive and i think that's all the surprises i have for tonight i always try to bring something yeah yeah you know it's, uh, it's really yeah. hard to uh get spoilers out of carson um you have to just <laughs> pause for a second and and then Let you just talk. start talking and, and <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true it just it just comes out and it's just because i'm genuinely excited about it like the fact that i haven't showed a, a midnight ops rotella yet is like amazing because i've got <laughs> i've got the color study but i'm like don't show the color study wait wait hold hold so, i don't know you should probably show it um, I'm gonna fight it. I'm gonna oh, fight man. it. Can we take a vote? Is it a democracy? Like, <laughs> this is what yeah. happened to Joe Fest. This is what happened to Joe Fest, and that's why all sixteen characters. That's why all sixteen characters got spoiled. But at at Joe Fest, that was the most memorable panel. Like I walked away from it feeling emotional. Is like, awesome. yes, I want this to win, I, and I want all of these people to have something special and memorable happen. So, like, Thank I you. was in at that point. Awesome. Yeah. It's an emotional thing for me too, man. Like I, I literally, after coming away from Joe Fest, I was like, we just made memories that are going to last for a lifetime for several of those yeah. people. You know, I, I think four for four, 
the people that were there that that had the big reveal of their character being selected by this team to be pushed forward for development. I think four for four, those are lifelong memories. And it's amazing because I know for me, like the last year and a half has been unreal. So I just know like it's it's going to be so much fun for them going forward too. So that was my yeah. birthday present, literally. Like um, I was there the week before my birthday. So mm -hmm. Jofas was my birthday present. And when I met you, because I literally just said hi and said that I submitted and automatically you were like super excited. And he's like, I can't tell you everything. Well, you showed me a little bit and I was like starstruck. And uh, I had the card back, right? And yeah. I was like, I can't tell you everything, but I'm going to show you this. And, I was like, you know <laughs> and it totally spoils everything. So it was like, you know, it, 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 and I remember I'm the I was worst. Like, all right, all right. That means I got to pull out that old age rum from 30 years ago. And Carson needs to have a shot of that because yeah. it was amazing. I'm literally uh, the worst. I love Joe Fest. Joe Fest was awesome. And you guys are doing amazing, all of you. And, and this is something that it's not just here in the States. Everybody's watching this. And um, sometimes, you know, it's easy to forget, but it's not just one part of the world. It's the entire world from mm -hmm. YouTube. And trust me, they do. Yeah. Um, the Spanish community from Spain, the Latin American community, they watch. Um, mm -hmm. I have been, I have the, the, the pleasure of meeting a few of them and they're straight honest and be like, oh, I watched this and Again, and that's one of the reasons I'm a big fan also of what who the cover commander is doing. Um, we used to watch it way back before even the hurricane. I was like, oh, there's a G.I. Joe channel, and and we will watch Cobra Convergence and everybody. That's how I discover uh, comic troves. And, and I always oh. literally, um, you know, we, we backed it. I was like, no, we, we need to help out. We need to back them. And it's, it's, it's an amazing community. It's, it's beautiful is great and it's one of the best feelings in the world to, be, to now think that i'm part of this community and i'm really yeah. well, you are. Yeah. Now, now, now i get to be a fan of you so don't that, say that because i'm a baby i'm me. gonna cry here dude like, uh, <laughs> david, david man not even <laughs> no joke man your your figure has gotten such positive responses literally yeah. like, I, I hesitate I hesitate to say any one character is the most popular, but man, people love Soul Eagle Guerrero. So I was thinking, uh, and and I, I think I didn't mention it, but I was I wanted to do something that people could enjoy and that it was fun, and because I I try to do something serious, but at the same time, it's like, no, come on, like my favorite GI Joe sort of was a lot of people hate. Um, right. I was born in 1982, so I got to see like. The later line, even though I mm -hmm. had like the old school first uh, GI Joes, but dude, Basuka with the jersey, Harbaugh with the, you right. know, I thought I legit should you not in Puerto Rico, Harbaugh was really hard to find because everybody in the playground thought that was Roberto Clemente, the baseball. Yeah. Player. All right. Like, yeah, and everybody would be like, oh, that's Roberto Clemente as a soldier. So everybody wanted to have that figure. I never saw nice. it. Nice. I, I never owned one as a kid, so it's to yeah. me the vintage line has that that fun and inclusive aspect to it. And yeah. there's there's plenty of toys being made that are military realism. Now we need we need some more fun in our lives yeah. and with our action figures, especially when you're talking about that vintage era. So. Yeah, I mean, my guy, my guy has a carrier pigeon. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> what, what a great idea. Yeah, and, and, and I think, uh, um, and a lot of people don't realize that, yes, the old school military stuff is perfect. It's beyond perfect, all right? Well, I think, you've blended, of... oops, I think you've blended in the military and the wrestling look very well. Uh, could you just give us a quick rundown on the weapons that he's carrying? Because that looks like it would pack a punch. So I thought, again, I, I like the stuff that a lot of people don't like from the 90s. And I like the big launchers because I was a kid. So I would play with the launchers, right? And I thought it would be awesome 
for him to have kind of like huge like electrical brass knuckle that he could right. punch it down. Because I was thinking kind of like water <laughs> in the cartoons and wait, wait, did you say punch a tank? I think he yeah, said punch a tank. I'm pretty sure he said punch a tank. Because <laughs> I was thinking over the top. Because a lot of people go, like a lot of people love the comic book because it was more grounded, but the cartoon was bonkers. We had yeah, to yeah. jumping off of a, a plane, a jet. At high speed and landing somewhere else and landing to another plane. They were doing like superhero stuff. So to me, yeah. with G.I. Joe, yes, of course, the snap, some shadow, and all the other cool stuff from the comic book. Yes, it was perfect and it was canon in my head. But the over crazy superhero stuff, so so as well. Because I thought to me as a kid, it was a G.I. Joe like the Avengers. It's just mm -hmm. they're just soldiers. And you yeah. know, like every, everybody sees military. I saw the superheroes. You got Duke, yep. you got Spirit, and that was the other thing. You got people from all over the world. So I always love that. And well, and the thing about this, David, is uh, I was a big comic book fan growing up uh, in the '80s and the '90s. And when I saw the the original sketch, I thought that this guy would not only look good as a wrestler, but he would look good in like the comic books, like X Force and stuff like that, <laughs> where yeah. uh, you know. I, I mean, I, I was going to say I grew up with those books, and, and I remember uh, when Bane came out with the nice quest and Night's nice End. And, oh, I remember, yeah. and, and and it was from Santa Prisca in the middle of the Caribbean, and he wore a wrestling mask. I'm like, there's no wrestling in Cuba. He's Puerto Rican then. So <laughs> automatically, I would say that in my head. And so when when when... I thought about the idea. I was like, no, it's got to be something fun. It's got to be something that people will love. And it represents part of my culture and, and, and just not Puerto Rican culture, but Latin American culture. And that's mm -hmm. what I thought about it. And that's the reason I named him like that. And I gave him a double barrel Magnum because I was like, come on, this dude lives in this state. He needs to pack power. So he's got to be a right. double barrel Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> double barrel Magnum. This yeah, guy's just heard his spot right on the right on the T uh, triple C. Yeah, does it have a revolver kind of it, yeah. Yeah, mechanism, but it. also a magazine for extra ammo? Or what's going on there? Uh, I yeah. may I, I like so I looked it up online and there mm -hmm. they do ex like double barrel magnums that exist, but I found one that was like small with like a cut barrel. Mm -hmm. But it but it, you know, in, in in I mean not the barrel, but um um what do you say where the bullets come out um the chamber barrel. yeah the chambers were like in, i was like no nah, i gotta make a short impact because i was thinking he has the wrestling belt but he have grenades in it and he uses like the flashbang grenades and the smoke grenades to blind like the enemy and and suplex them and then do an intro we do in the smoke that's what <laughs> i thought because i was thinking like you know awesome. like a like a wrestler he has I to tried. have the charisma and that whole show this stuff but yeah. the Magnum, I thought it's like, no, because he's fighting like big armor dudes. He needs something close to like knock them back. Not I that love that he's still him. like a showman. I love that, man. Yes. Like I thought about him like him just like jump into enemy line in a parachute and then dropping up the parachute before even landing and dropping an right. elbow. Nice. And, <laughs> the yes. flesh ring and all that yes. and just going like a wrestler, suplexing the dudes because uh, he's big. And, I love all of this. Yeah, and then coming out to his comrades like, the champion is here. Like just <laughs> I love it, to dude. his annoyance of his comrades like, oh my God, this dude. Yeah, he's, he's back. An entrance. I just, yeah. I just have an image of this guy standing on top of a like smoldering tank, bullets yeah. bouncing off the belt, and just blasting, <laughs> shooting people that gathering. Oh my god, it's priceless. I, I love I it. Legit, I legit thought of Sangi from Street Fighter, but more over the top. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I just want to quickly shout out Ryan. Hey Ryan, uh, good morning Thanks, from Ryan. Australia. Hello to all you fine gentlemen. Uh, it's yeah. evening where you guys are, but uh, yeah, good morning from my end. Thanks for the super chat, man. Super appreciate it. Thank you very yeah. much. So uh, I've been yeah, getting in. Uh, I've been getting in some great art, as I was mentioning. Oh um, yes, there was uh, there was one with shh, where so he's got this mask on, and uh, somebody illustrated it with the the mask is actually a it disperses a sleeping toxin. So like he comes in the room and. <laughs> 
like smoke Catch. or whatever billows out and puts everybody else to sleep. I thought that was a great little because ninja, ninjas like to be not seen, not heard. You know, yeah. just if they could take you out, you know, maybe with nonviolence, but definitely without them being seen or heard, all the better. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be the opposite of Soul Eagle Guerrero. Soul Eagle Guerrero wants everybody to see and hear him. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so they they might be an interesting foil for each other. That 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 um, mouthpiece could be. Uh sound activated you can just go shh and it comes out nice yes like that would be cool right sleep yeah so yeah. like when he wants someone to go to sleep he's just shh. <laughs> that's <laughs> both hilarious and frightening <laughs> yeah the the, the 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 idea from alexander and, and and the other kid are amazing and i thought it was very very heartwarming to see Alexander's dad, Jason, really be excited. Oh, yeah. I got teary eye, brother. I was just like, oh, this no. is awesome. This is great. And then I no. saw him. I was like, I cry, dude. Like a Ben Conway. Like ben a sports Conway. movie. I don't know about you guys, but I can't watch a sport movie when the ba the, the underdog makes it. I cry yeah. like a baby. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I Rama, can watch I'm like, me. You put me <laughs> a sports movie. I cry like a baby. The underdog made it. So I it was a. Uh, at that presentation, so Jason, the the father to Alexander, was in the back of the room, and Ben was like right near him. And instead of Ben watching the presentation, he just turned around and was watching Jason and taking pictures of him. Uh. <laughs> and so, so he sent me a picture of Jason teary eyed. I was like, man, that's so sweet, dude. It's mean, like yeah, literally, yeah. literally lifelong memories, man. Yeah, it's pretty you're amazing. Doing like great work, Carson. You're, how, doing, how? you're doing some amazing work, and, and <sighs> it's it's it, it. I think I can't I can't express it enough. To say that it the the feeling of having all our childhood come back again, it's just it's overwhelming. Uh, I'm yeah. not an emotional person. I, I don't get teary eyed, but I will say that I am uh, extremely uh, taken back by by how much has has given back to the community, how much it's been able to highlight and spotlight uh, the old and the new. Uh, creators, uh, as Brian mentioned before, we, we've got the new and the old, and they work together so well. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, it, it's because there's no podcast. egos. That's the thing that's so amazing right. about this. In the, in the old creative team, there's no egos. They're not like, well, no, we want to do our creations. I I gave them that option. I, I was absolutely like, hey, if there were old ideas that you guys wanted to work on that you never got to do, like now's your chance. And they were like, well, let's just see what everybody else sent in, you know. And then they were going through, yeah. and literally, like every every concept. Mark Pennington is the most like just sweethearted guy with every concept i could tell like he wanted to find the thing that would get him in on it and that would get him excited about working on it like it was just amazing to watch his his mind work and uh ron rudat you know he gravitates towards the military realism and the females <laughs> right wow. so ron ron knows what ron likes and mark pennington's like he can find the diamond in in every uh, possible scenario so it was amazing uh, working with them and watching them and like knowing how successful their careers have been and all the amazing stuff that they've already produced there's literally no ego in that yeah. room so was mark, was, was mark the in-house designer like after ron left is that kind of correct so he picked up yeah and, and i just finished um well within the last six months i finished mark pennington's page on 3d joe so there's a very good explanation for kind of when he came in and what exactly he did but the very short story is ron rudat started working on gi joe real american hero in 1981 and he stopped around 1986. Now he had already done the initial design for most of the 87 characters and actually a couple from 88 and 89. So Mark Pennington picked up halfway through 86 and ended up like rounding out all those 87 characters. So really there should be like co-authorship credit for those two guys for 1987. And then for 88, 89, it was almost exclusively Pennington. There's a couple figures in there that were Bart Sears as well, who is more known for working on Cops and Crooks, but he actually designed a couple G.I. Joe figures as well. Oh. But it's pretty much the Mark Pennington show for three years. So if you're thinking 1980s G.I. Joe, it's Ron Rudat and Mark Pennington from a figure design perspective. Well, the, the fact that you're able to bring in some of that 90s love as well, you know, it See? doesn't go... I was thinking for like year two or year three, I'd love to get Vinny Delivia and yeah. say say like a Kurt Groen in there and, and loop those creatives in as well. Because if I don't know if they're paying attention to any of this, if they're watching any of this, but if they are, the fact that I haven't reached out to you guys yet doesn't mean I don't love your work and respect you as creatives as well. So I would hope to expand the scope of this, 
you know, is, if it goes on to year two and year three. Yeah, yeah, that's that my question cool. was going to be whether this was going to go beyond he's 18 and if it was going to form into an actual business instead of just a Kickstarter. I, we would love for it to. I mean, if you look at uh, a lot of the small toy companies, uh, you know, kind of pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and making things happen, uh, a lot of them have started this way. You know, Boss Fight Studios, you know, initially used kick, fu Kickstarter funding to get started, get the ball rolling. Bobby Vala, Valiverse, uh, yep. obviously used Kickstarter to get his initial seed money. I, I would like, I, I think of it as seed money. You don't yeah. want to have to go back to Kickstarter and give them 10% every time you want to make a new wave of figures. You, you don't want to have to give away that. That 10% could be the profits that are going to the creative team. You know what I mean? So if there's a way for us to save money, I think that it would behoove us to do it so that these creators kind of maximize their profit. But now that said, I will say this about Kickstarter. I'm a big Kickstarter fan because you can look at the referral traffic and where people are coming from. And I think way more than 10% of the Kickstarter backers have found me via Kickstarter. And so if I was relying on OperationRecall.com and maybe Big Bad Toy Store or any other distributor that we would get into a partnership with to pre-sell these things, I think you're going to lose a lot of the interest that you gain by being on Kickstarter. So I know while some toy makers don't want to use Kickstarter in, in perpetuity, I don't see a downside. It's a great ad campaign. Like, mm -hmm. What's the next unlock? Oh, yeah, yes. of course. Carson just posted an update. I love, it's a lot of fun. Right? It's a lot of uh, fun. It's a good way to engage with people. You know, I'm I kinda, enjoy it. I'm kind of so. new at this Kickstarter. Like, so when this ends, right? When the when the day comes up, mm -hmm. after that point, are you able? Will you be able to? Like, if you're if you're invested will you be able to add things on after the end date yes and so the way that people have gone about that is using a third-party platform called backer kit and i believe there's okay. a couple other options out there but backer kit seems to be the most popular there's crowdox and as well so. crowdox yep that's right right but so, so the short answer is yes uh we'll be able to extend the fund and extend the kind of window of opportunity to pre-purchase uh beyond the kickstarter but that said i do want to incentivize the all-in backers and to thank the all-in backers with a free figure. And I don't feel like it's right to make that figure available in perpetuity. I figure like well, there should be some shelf life for that one. So right, right. maybe, I, I, I understand maybe it'll be... Yeah, sorry, exclusive bit. I understand the exclusive bits, but I'm just saying like your original releases. Mm -hmm. That's all. Like if you, if you know, like if you couldn't fully fund it, but you wanted mm -hmm. to get a couple more after it ended, you'll be able to do yeah. it. Or if right? you found it after the fact, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally open to that. I think I've replied. Yeah, I try to I try to keep up with the his tank Q and A thread as well. There's been a lot of back and forth on that, um, and definitely one of the questions was what happens with that. So, okay, here's my here's my spoiler. I'm giving you guys more information that hasn't been divulged yet. I'm yes. going to go ahead, and even if it's personally funded, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all wave one through four figures go through the creative development steps of ideation, idea refinement, color studies, presentation art, uh, engineering drawings, which, which means 360 turnarounds and accessory engineering drawings for all 16 wave one through wave four characters. That's oh, going to wow. happen. That's going to happen. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I've already sent the checks. I talk too much. I give away too much information. What I wanted to do, what I wanted to do for the creative team. <laughs> Keep him talking. Means, He'll give yeah. us something. Yeah, when you're yeah. excited about something, it's hard to keep it in, you know? It's true. It's true. So I, I sent these big cardboard kickoff packets to Ron, Mark, and Larry, and Kirk. And, uh, you know, we already had an, an agreement in place that everybody would get paid up front for their work. And so what I did was I broke the characters into different manila envelopes. And as they break open that character, there's another check for them. I wanted it to be oh, fun for them. Cool. I, nice. I want everybody to have fun every step of the way. And so to me, I work with freelancers in my video and animation business all the time. One of the best things is not having to worry about getting paid. It's like just knowing when you send that yeah. invoice, you get that paid. And so I thought, what's one step further I could take this? How about right when you start this character, you get paid? So I thought That's that would amazing. be cool. Um, so I'm committed. I'm fully in. I, you know, there's no turn or no turning back for me. The only question that remains to be answered is, will I get the support I need from the community to manufacture those figures? And maybe I will, maybe I won't. You know, we're, we're already there. We're already half the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I am putting my money where my mouth is and I have been. 
for a year and a half, two years now. It's, uh, it's, it's so rewarding though. I told somebody else, man, even if I never make a nickel back off of it, it will have been worth it for the experience and the right. impact that I've, that I've been able to have on people. It's been amazing. And so uh, the big, I guess the big announcement for this show is I'm going to go ahead and get all of that creative development, IP development work done. And so the, the lingering question is, will we have enough for manufacturing? So to your question, Gaz, about the, the will they be unlocked through, you know, backer kit? Certainly if we, if we sell enough, like if you look at what happened with RoboSkull, they raised about 600 on their Kickstarter and then they sold another 350 or so through backer kit. So yes, if we, if we have a similar trajectory where we're selling 50% through the backer kit that we sold through the Kickstarter, then yes, mm -hmm. if, we, if we unlock 10 figures uh, during the Kickstarter, then we might unlock another five figures in the backer kit. I'm totally willing to handle it that way. As we raise the money that are the goals for manufacturing, yes, I don't want to start peeling profits off. I want to invest that in manufacturing these figures. Right. Well, I think another opportunity would be, and, and you've sort of touched on it already, is some of these fan favorite characters can come back in different decos, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's follow. If Rotello Midnight Ops, right. he's got to have a squad. It's not just going to be him going out at night, right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, there's there's going to have to be, and, and that's the nature. That the Night Ops version of this character, I think, will be actually more brighter, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can really see them at night. I, I don't know if he goes out on secret ops. You know, he goes out on like the eco warriors kind of ops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's the he's the the, he's the, the like, what do you say? Like, just to draw the attention. Well, the he's other, the distraction. He's the distraction. Yeah, he's the distraction. You, send, <laughs> you send him in from the east, and then the, yeah. the rest of the midnight ops comes in from the west. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and he'll land on like a like a plancha, like just a flying plancha on top of somebody while <laughs> distract the enemy while the real team goes yeah. in. It's meanwhile, just the, one guy, but he punched the tank. Okay, so just so just quick question to break it up for a second here. Mm -hmm. Um, did I imagine it, or is there actually a potential pipe dream to do this in in six inch scale? I I wouldn't call it a pipe dream. I would say, from a manu manufacturing perspective. What I want to do with this creative team is recreate figures in the form and format that they're known for, right? So mm -hmm. O-ring three and three quarter. But I concede and I recognize that six inches, the action figure of the future, it's way more popular now. There's a lot more people actively collecting highly detailed, highly articulate six inch action figures. There you go. So I would love, like I was saying, for this creative team to reap the rewards of their hard work. And so if there's a way that we can partner with a highly articulate, highly detailed six inch action figure design team slash manufacturing partner to make uh, this IP in that format, we're absolutely willing to do it. We're just get we're just starting with the three and three quarter, you know, modern O ring action figures. But yes, I think these could translate to six inch scale and it would be a ton of fun. Well, other than a Galapagos tortoise, are we gonna have any other vehicles? <laughs> um, I'm I'm liking that. I'm liking that turtle. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, man. I, you I know, am, I, I want to do things that are completely unique that haven't been done before. And so a carrier pigeon hadn't been done. A genetically modified Galapagos tortoise hasn't been done. Um, a luchador wrestler in three and three quarter hasn't been done. So there's a lot of unique stuff happening with this line, oh, which yeah. is really exciting. And it's and it all, you know, there's common there's common thread there. It's military fantasy. It should have some fun in it. I want my daughter to enjoy playing with these. You know what I mean? So We'll see what happens with it. Now, vehicles, we talked about this in the panel, and I, I kind of I put it back to the crowd. I was like, okay, so if we hit what we needed to hit to produce all four waves and there's additional money coming in, would you guys like to invest that in additional new figures or developing comic books to build up the IP or vehicles or you know any number of things? Vehicles are certainly an option I would pursue. Now, being the thrifty person that I am and plugged into the community and loving my friends and wanting to, sh our successes, you know, all boats rise together kind of thing. My friend, Mar uh, Greg has created a vehicle called the modular arm, Mar modular armored range vehicle, Marv. And uh, the modular part being that it has little peg holes all over it. And his initial designs for this, he hasn't produced the kind of uh, extra extraneous sets yet that really transform Marv. So one of my ideas was let's create one of those extraneous 
kind of accessory sets that really transforms right. Marv and make that an operation recall exclusive. So it feels different from Marv, but still yeah. using that platform as your starting point. And That's the benefit to that would be you get an awesome vehicle because it is Marv is an awesome vehicle, but you get an awesome vehicle that doesn't just feel like a repaint. It feels somewhat unique. And we don't have to pay the $200,000 in mold fees, you know, to get the, the molds made. We just have to build the, the accessory parts, right? So it's, I wouldn't have to go to the community and say, okay, guys, I need another $200,000 so our good guys can drive around in this modular armored range vehicle, right? It'd be a lot. If we get a three and three quarter inch wrestling ring. Uh, I would definitely be all in on that. <laughs> right, right. So and then on the bad there. guy, on the bad guy side, I'm basically begging Ben Conway to let me make a bad guy robo skull because our, our bad guys are already lining up with skulls. Like it's just a, it's just a perfect combination. But Ben Ben's not going to touch that until he's completely fulfilled everything else. He doesn't want to oversaturate the the robo skull market. And I totally get that too. But anyway, no, hear, hear me out. Yep, aircraft carrier. Right. <laughs> it's so easy to do. It's so easy right. to do. Right. Um, I think with a a CNC routing machine, you know, you can just cut the deck and maybe just build the tower. Uh, well, it could be an aircraft carrier that only carries a motorcycle and uh, yes, it could be one of those aircraft carriers. Yeah. 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 smaller aircraft. aircraft carriers from like the British house for the Harrier jets. Be like one of those right. with that little ramp at the end, and you just drive a motorcycle off. And it could carry the Robosco, and that's it. So, a yeah. flying motorcycle. Right. Yeah, a I, th I think your priorities motorcycle. are right, though. Like, I think your priorities are right. We, we, you've got a really special project right now, and it, it's going pretty well. And and there's still some time in it. In it, um, you know, this goes well, then then it opens the doors for a lot of things. But I think you you got the priorities right, and um, yeah. this, whatever happens with it, this is special. And um, and I, I just look forward to look forward to getting the figures, and and uh, I'm really happy to support it. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. I do. And I think to your point, you know, the, the fact that we've got this entire creative team kind of all marching in lockstep again, excited to be working together and making new toys. We don't, we, I don't want to squander that by focusing on, well, let's make some new vehicles. You know, it, it, if there's yeah. tens of thousands of dollars of profit, well, then I want that to be another figure. Like I want yeah, them cool. to keep, keep doing what they do so well. You know. I'm sure they appreciate all that you've done for them as well, giving them some spotlight. Paying them up front must have been a big deal for them. Um, so, you know, they, what what has been some of the uh, feedback coming from the creative team? I mean, I would say over the years of, of building 3D Joes, one of my big focuses, once I got done with the 1982 to 1984 or 94 figures, I started doing the 1982 to 1994 vehicles. And once I hit the late 80s, early 90s vehicles, I really kind of hit a wall mm -hmm. inspiration wise. I'll be honest with the entire I, community. The I, early, I, I know that wall. I, I've, I've been yeah. to that wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's a honestly, man, you want to work on when this is a hobby and you're doing it nights and weekends, which is very much what 3D Joe's is. Uh, it's hard to motivate yourself to give away your nights and weekends continuously on things that you don't a have an emotional attachment to or B, have a, I'm not trash talking too much, I hope, but B, a product that you don't have the most love and respect for. There's a lot of duds in the 90s vehicles. There's also some great ones. Don't get me wrong. Right. There's, there's some that I love, but there's some duds in there. And so when you look at the level of documentation we were doing on vehicles for 3D Joes, it, it's, it's a lot of man hours. And so it was a bit of a struggle to get through the vehicles. We finally did. Um, but the way that I reinvigorated myself on 3D Joe's and got myself to stay in the game on it was starting those creator profiles and really building out those creator profiles. And that became like my passion for the website was documenting these guys' work in, in detail, you know, and probably to a level of detail that hasn't been achieved elsewhere. And so that's been very rewarding. I literally just got uh, Facebook uh, connected today with a gentleman that was one of the early interner, internal sculptors there. And he's, he's passed on, but this was his son and his right. son and his wife uh, have seen the creator profiles on 3D Joe's and they want me to build one for his father. And, and he reached out to me to tell me this. I was like, that's amazing. I would absolutely love it. Maybe we start with a zoom interview and talk about his work and his legacy first. And if you guys feel comfortable with me, I come up and film with you. They've still got a lot of his old sculpting work 
And so we'll be able to, you know, cool. shoot 360 spins of those and um, obviously shoot detail photos and whatever videos, uh, you know, applicable. So it's just something that keeps snowballing. Like the fact that we put in this work and built these pages for these people, other creatives are, are taking note of it and starting to say, wow, he's really, he's given it all to this thing. And, you know, they're starting to reach out, which is amazing. The 3D Joe's is invaluable. I mean, c considering what has happened with other GI Joe focused websites in recent years, I mean, right. we need 3D Joe's and I reference it all the damn time. I'm there That's probably like close to every day. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's appreciated greatly. Um, and um, I, I, you know, I'll point people in that direction as much as I possibly can. So that is some work that um, it, I mean, not only does it provide a great resource, but it also, it's, there's a, histori um, a historical aspect to it. Like it's, you're documenting stuff that um, going forward, we will want to know. This, this is historical information. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think 3D Joe's is a fantastic website and I'm really, really grateful that it's there. Nice. Yes, yeah, thank you. My go to place to go. It felt like, uh, you know, the the first aspect of it was the toys, but then the second aspect of it was the books and posters, the the documentation of the artwork. Right, the artwork was obviously very very important to me, and like the third dimension of three D Joe's now has ap apparently become the creators um, that were behind it, and so being able to go into Bill Merkline's house, uh, dig out a trough of paperwork that he had. And while I was there filming with him, while he was sculpting Rotello for two weeks, we sold all that paperwork. We made him $13,000 in two weeks. And I'll wow. tell you, boy, Bill was thrilled. Like that that money really meant something to him. And it was amazing. I, these, these, and I did, man, I, I, I still kick myself to this day because I said something when I came in the, when I came in his house, I was like, if he has anything, I'm not going to try to buy it because there's always people that come to these creators houses and they just, want to buy things from the buy things yeah. from. And, uh, and so when he pulled out all that paperwork, I was like, I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to try to buy anything from you while I was here. I was just going to enjoy the friendship and work on Rotello. Right. Um, but man, he had the Hydro Viper Bart Sears presentation artwork. It's just a color copy, but it's probably yeah. my single favorite piece of presentation artwork that I've seen in my years of obsessing over GI Joe. And he had the 360 turnaround sculpt sheet for it and a couple other things. And I was like, man, Ever since then, I've kicked myself for not just buying the Hydro Viper a lot because <laughs> it's so beautiful. But anyway, it's it's been amazing forming relationships with these guys and obviously being able to bring them some work. Uh, Doug Hart, yeah, we, we worked on Rotello a while back, and that already materialized into Call Sign Longbow utilizing him for their card art and Robo Skull using utilizing him for their retro card art. Uh, so that's already like. I gave him one gig for my one painting. Now he's gotten three other paintings from two of my friends kind of thing. So it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, to all get them these look guys. great next to each other too. Yes. Very compatibly. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm very excited about is that they'll all have, because they're all compatible figures. Grindstone yeah. Toys is making the, the Robo Skull retro figure. So yes. that's really, when you look at Call Sign Longbow, the Robo Skull retro figures and what we're doing with Operation Recall, they should all be very compatible, made by the same yep. factory, produced by the same people with, yeah. They well, should some, be seeing the same card back artwork, all six by nine. It's going to be, perfect. it's going to be nice. It's a resurgence. I've got some, I've got some compatibility questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ryan's like, uh, are these going to fit into the older Joe vehicles? Uh, the assumption is yes. Yeah, so they're three and three quarter inch and uh, similar uh, proportions as the three and three quarter inch figures with the one exception, we might make a couple bucks a little bit different size so they can be stockier. So I'm not going to say a character like Soul Eagle Guerrero is absolutely going to fit in every Real American Hero vehicle. He might just be a little too big, you know? Wait, wait, if it doesn't feet? fit in my buzz bore, I'm out. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's going to crush your buzz bore with his right fist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's going right on top of the havoc. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, gonna ride on top of the flag. And there's like, no vehicle that's gonna contain that man. No the way. Yeah. It's <laughs> the the flag. He just yeah. he turns the flag by flexing in certain directions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the screw holes in the back uh, compatible with vintage Joe backpacks. Yes. So backpack holes and foothole pegs for figure stands should be compatible. Perfect. Cross cross swappable. Wow. 
I think that that I mean it just makes sense. I mean, it has um, to be. Now every you can play with all of these with hundreds of figures and vehicles. I think that's mm-hmm. just a, a brilliant fantastic idea and yeah. adds to the value of them. Yeah, I it's it's like Ken was saying. I believe this is to me in my mind. It's not 1995. It's 1990 when Mark left off, right? So Ron mm-hmm. did 82 to 86. Mark did 87 to 89. And this is them picking up where they left off. Now maybe year two, year three when we get, you know, Vinny and Kurt and everybody else uh, involved, then we'll say it's 95, but we'll see. But I don't think we're going to do stuff like Manimals. So with the question with, the question uh, with the following years, will you revisit some of the submissions and yeah, see so if any of those will make the cut? I, I absolutely am going to leave that call to the creative team, but I can tell you where we left it. Uh, we started out with 177, narrowed it to 60, narrowed it to 40. And then on our third day, it was picking the top 16. And Kirk was brilliant with this. He was like, let's not pick anybody yet. Let's decide the categories of characters we want each way, right? Like, so we need one brilliant leader, kind of, you know, man in the field, like a Sergeant Duke kind of guy, one big bad guy that's does whatever, one uh, good guy that's more kind of straight military and one bad guy, you know, he went categorically and went through all 16. And then the four of us went and did our best to put one person in each bucket. Um, Coming out of that, they had 27 figures left over that, they were excited about, but that just didn't make the 16 cut. So before we do another call for submissions, I'm going to put it out to them. Hey guys, here's the 27 that didn't make the cut on that final day. Would you like to pick, pick the next however many ways from these, or would you like me to put out the call for submissions again? And this time it might not be 177. It might be like a thousand because yeah. operation recall might have a little more visibility at that point. Right. I, I do kind of regret not submitting something, but I, I couldn't come up with anything as, as good as, as good as that guy's idea. The only idea that I uh, could come up with would definitely not be selected. So uh, well, I, I really Ryan, good. Take heart in the fact that Rotella wouldn't have made the cut. <laughs> you know, it's if I if I wasn't the pilot study, you know, getting in there with my little carrier pigeon guy, I don't think I would have made the cut either. There was some great stuff there. I made well, a design that Carson took a picture that I think fits Hoodie Cobra Commander, and he knows what I'm talking about. I do, I do. I've already shared it with Ron and Mark. Yeah, and so uh, it's uh, it's a really nice, but it's also got that same kind of skeleton mask on top of it. That's why I when I. I'm redrawing the same going. Going. and I'm going to send it your way in the next nice. All right, brother. You're always welcome, man. I love that stuff popping up in my inbox. Yep. Well, guys, I think uh, I think we will wrap it up here. Uh, does anyone else want to throw in their two cents before we well, – oh, first of all, David, where can we find you? Have you got, have you got somewhere where we can go uh, and check out some of your artwork? Yes, I have uh, Instagram called art. Uh, Dash, right? Dash is the one in the bottom. Uh, off, D E M, them. Like art, dash, off, dash, them. And then, All right, if you could, if you send that to me, I'll put it in the description. Yes. I, I was looking, I couldn't find it. Uh, yeah. you don't have to send it now, it's fine, but I'll, um, uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was for the life of me, I couldn't find it to tag you. Um, and I was like, it's got to be something crazy that I'm just not finding. Uh, I but I knew that you must have had. You must have had something because your artwork is incredible. Uh, I've been able to see some of the stuff that you've posted on Facebook. Uh, and so if people do uh, go and check out David's stuff on Instagram, you're not going to be uh, disappointed. It's great stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, I can see why uh, your submission was chosen because that, that to me, that, that screams uh, childhood wrestling, uh, childhood comic book collecting, uh, I didn't know I wanted someone that could punch a tank, but now I do. <laughs> I was joking, but hey, let's let's keep it there. I was crossover. Him and Bane, let's do it. It's canon now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely go and check out David. Um, what have you got coming up uh, in in the in the line in the works, David? Anything that we should be aware of? So um, designing, and I'm going to share this with Carson pretty soon. Uh, I want to do like a small copter but not just like any copter that we've seen in different lines and a bad guy that uh, he already saw a prototype of it uh when i showed him my artwork and he really liked it so i'm thinking of something else and i already started working on that and trust me you'll get it 
before Monday. Awesome. Um, and I'll just, any cool idea that I can think of, I will send it his way. And I want to do a shout out to Matthew LaCroix and Jason Schirmeyer. Yes. Um, I actually, first Alpha. Yes, right. First Alpha. I have worked with a couple of ideas with uh, Matthew and with Jason, specifically at Joe, uh, Joe Fest. And I'm really excited. And Jason Schirmeyer did some really cool stuff with an idea that I gave him. And I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So shout out to them. They're really good, good guys. Awesome. Really, really, really awesome people from the community because this community is the best. It's and we're all like intertwined, man. Matthew Lacroix is my paint master guy on Operation Recall. Like we all work so well together, support each other. So it, it's good stuff, man. It's good energy. I was on a call with Matthew this week. He's sending my second Rotella paint master because I got to send one to the factory. And I was like, I'm not sending this one to the factory until I have a second one. I can't let them out of my grasp, you know. Yeah. Plus, I want to I want to compare the two and like decide which one's the more perfect one that I want to keep in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like we're all working together, man. It's an amazing community, very supportive. Uh, Carson, uh, where can we find you? I do have you linked in the description, but uh, as if anyone doesn't know. Where can we back your uh, Operation yeah, so Recall? I think the easiest, since it's a really long URL, I'll, I'll just say go to operationrecall.com and click on the little Kickstarter badge at the top. That's probably the shortcut. Otherwise, the URL is ridiculously long. Um, dude, I just appreciate all the positive energy coming from you guys. It's, you know, from the community, I'd say it's been 95% positive. And my love language is words of affirmation. And you guys are fueling the tank to help keep me, keep me going. Cause I've been going hard on this stuff, man. I, I haven't oh, yeah. been shaving. I don't know if y'all can tell. <laughs> haven't, haven't been Same sleeping here. a whole lot. Haven't been shaving, barely I showering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shaved, so, but I, I missed a spot. Just kind yeah. of like, <laughs> right around here. Yeah. Uh, I was a groomer. I shave and it shows up. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised there's a five percent negative, but you know, okay, cool. yeah. So. Well, there's always going to be some, you know. And so the people that you know, I want to give a shout out to all of the creative folks in our hobby in the community that have been pouring their own energy into this. I've gotten probably twelve to fifteen drawings now that are legit of these characters, yeah. which is incredible. Like I said, the guy from New Zealand that's been drafting this '80s rock tune that I can't wait to roll right. out. Um, my friend Joe, who started drafting a script and now we're 30 pages in and it's good. Um, just it so much good creative energy coming my direction. And thank you guys. Cause you make me feel like I know I'm not alone in this, but I do spend a lot of time on my own, just working on this. You know what I mean? So for everybody to be giving me support and creativity, it's really, it's really helping keep me going. It's fueling the tank. So thank you well, all. Thanks for bringing us in on the ride. It's, uh, no doubt, know, man. Thank you for ride. coming along. I, I said at the convention, uh, welcome to the crazy train, all aboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are well and truly aboard, mate. You've got yeah. an amazing, I can't wait to uh, to see the, uh, the the end. When does it, when does the Kickstarter end? August, I believe it's August uh, 7th. Uh, August, 9, it is August 7th, yeah. 9 right. p.m. And so I'll be uh, closing out on a live stream with my friend Michael Mercy. So we're going to oh, do cool. kind of, one of those closing out probably the last hour and a half or so before the, uh, before the campaign ends, kind of a, a countdown to the end, the end of the uh, campaign, the start well, of a or the beginning company. of, uh, of something. Yeah. Yes. This is absolutely the beginning. You know, if we, if we unlock 10 figures, 12 figures, 18 figures, whatever we've managed to get through in this campaign, this is just the beginning. There's no doubt in my mind. That's why, what that's why I was willing to just say, Guys, let's go ahead and do all 18. So I now now I want to be clear every time I say that, that doesn't mean I can afford manufacturing. I can't. Sure. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna need y'all's help with manufacturing. Yeah. But. I don't think anybody can, but yeah, that would be a problem. <laughs> right? It's crazy. It's crazy. It, it's still amazing that uh, we're living in a time where um, projects like this, which is come from fans, people that appreciate the original line and the original creators to be able to collaborate with them and to be able to share that with the community is what a great time. What a yeah, great sorry. time to be a uh, G.I. Joe fan and what a great time to be part of this amazing community. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. I got to say it's surreal sitting with everybody here talking about everything that we've talked about today. Like, how, how did I get so lucky? I'll never know. But it, it's not unappreciated, I'll tell you. So, uh, Ken, where can we find you, buddy? I've got you in the description, but I love that. Yeah, 
you know, just look in the description, but I'm, I'm here often enough. So I'm going to say back operation recall, follow David's art, follow Gaz on Instagram, follow HCC yep. and Cobra Convergence. So for me, you can skip me on this one. Oh, wait, no, don't skip me. Because next week, there's actually going to be a very uh, informative video um, called O-Ring Renaissance, where nice. I, I, Carson, I've talked to you a little bit about it. Um, Zazel, I think you know a little bit about it. Where and I, it, The timing will be good because it'll be in that zone before we get the final wrap-up of Operation Recall. But the first line I talk about when the video starts will be Operation Recall after I do the, uh, the introduction. And I go over Longbow, Strike Force Alpha, um, the O ring figure that's in the Robo Skull, um, mm -hmm. the Legends of the Hidden Force line that Whiskey Jack Toys is running, and Delta 17, and a little bit of Zika Toys' um, and uh, Fresh Monkey fi Fiction's um, Eagle Force figure as mm -hmm. well. So basically, mm -hmm. I go through all the O ring ones that I'm aware of, and hopefully, mm -hmm. that gives you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of attention as well um, from another angle there. Uh, cars yes. hopefully gets a little bit more into the Kickstarter. If you need anything from me in terms of assets or whatever, man, just reach out, Ken. Uh, it's actually already filmed. Maybe I'll send you the the the, the early uh, the early link to it, and you can be like, okay, good. Uh, this timing works out well, and you can just tell me if, if the timing works out good for you when I release nice. it next weekend. So I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you the early link. How about that? Thank you to to you and Zazel, and obviously Brian. Man, you guys do such tremendous work, and I know as a video editor the time and energy and effort that goes into everything you guys produce on YouTube. I think a lot of people just, you know, jump on YouTube and watch things and just kind of expect it to be there for them. <laughs> and I don't expect it. I don't expect it to be there. I know every single video you guys produce is a sacrifice of your time and energy and effort. So thank you guys for doing what you do. Thank you. Uh, cheers, Mike. Appreciate that. They are a great bunch of guys, aren't they? Yep. Gaz, Gaz being the most handsome of the bunch, though. So is that hard is that a, <laughs> who's the headshot there? Let's see, Hunter, Megaforce. Okay. okay, there you go. Gotcha. <laughs> see, I'm not the only one that hasn't seen that movie, Gaz. He just doesn't remember he saw it. I think That's I've all. seen it. I think I've seen it as a. Hold on, Megaforce. But I if if I can plug what's on Joe Mind for a second, if you go back in their back catalog, they have a really fun episode where they uh, kind of uh, uh, MST3K the the Megaforce movie. One of my favorite. Oh episodes. right. <laughs> oh my god! It's all it's all it's mostly green screen. Oh no! It's 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 audio, but it's uh, it's and it's one of their older episodes, but uh, it's it's yeah. a lot of fun. It's a classic. Uh, no, no, no. I was, I'm clicking through actual images of the Megaforce movie. It looks like a lot of the action scenes. <laughs> oh, no, it's not green screen. No, that's, oh, that's all yeah. real. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to have to check this out. It's, yes, it, it's a must-see. Okay. We're going to have to do a, uh, a watch-along and force Ken to watch the whole thank thing. You, I think, I think thank, thank you, Thank you. I think nice. he gave up halfway through. But, yeah, Gaz, you, you're, you're always welcome at the Slaughterhouse, my friend. You're always in the chat. Uh, you're always... Uh, you're a very, uh, I want to say inclusive, but I mean, you're, you seem to be everywhere that I go in, from watching other channels. Um, and one of the, <laughs> one of the comforts of, of being in a, a live stream is when you see Gaz pop up and gives you the, uh, the, the cheers of the beer. Uh, so to have you, to have you on here as well as, uh, you know, it's part of my, cheers, part of my Gaz. comfort. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no just a fan. I'm a fan of all you guys. So when nobody knew about my channel, I could always rely on Zazel and Gaz to not leave me hanging on my premieres. So I wasn't just talking to nobody and my life. <laughs> just, yeah. Thank you all for just creating all this great stuff for me to enjoy. That's thank awesome. you, Carson, for what you're doing with this. This is incredible. When I first heard about it on Mercy's channel, I was like, super excited. Nice. So when it launched, that was, that was right there. I think yeah. I was number eight. I feel Thanks. every bit as lucky as all of you do that this is happening. Like I, I don't for a second think like I, I, it's weird. I don't associate myself with the creative team. I associate myself with the rest of the backers, you right. know, that are getting to watch this thing happen. Like I know it's, it's taken a lot of energy and everything, but man, I feel so very lucky just like you guys that they're willing to do this. So. Okay. All right. So, uh, David's Instagram is art underscore of underscore dem. I've got that there. I will put it, uh, I will pin a post so that people can find you. 
uh, Carson, uh, I, I feel like saying good luck with the rest of it, but you don't need it. You've, you, you're going to get there. You know, this is already a huge success. So I just want to say congratulations. Appreciate uh, it. Keep it up. Uh, I mean, I know it's I know it's a lot of hard work for you and your team as well. Uh, we only see what you show us. And I know that there's a lot more happening um, behind the scenes. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Brian, you've got... Cobra Convergence still happening for the rest of the month. So everyone yep. make sure you go and check out all those creators. Uh, check out the website. What's the website again, Hoodie? Um, it's it's um it's hcc788.com. It's I know it's it's uh, hard to yeah, imagine hard that, to that, that specific yeah. URL, but it's hcc788.com. Or or if you're British, hcc788.com. Yeah, H. Mm. Okay, got it. Got it. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for everyone jumping on here. I can't wait to chat again afterwards, uh, after this is all said and done, uh, talking about the actual figures in hand. Uh, there's a lot of steps between then, but yeah, I want to continue the conversation so long as you guys want to keep coming back. Okay. Thank you, Zazel. Appreciate you having us, man. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you for inviting me, sir. Thank you much. You're welcome. I'll see you in the